I call the meeting to order. Thank you all for coming. First thing that we have on the agenda is a public hearing on the Town of Tamworth Traffic and Road Regulation and Policy. So I would like to take this opportunity right now to open it up to the public hearing. We'd be happy to take comments, recommendations, data boys. There any changes that we could react to? No, nothing really. No. Um, my question concern is about changing the parking in the village. Um, I realize that backing out in the village from the library lyceum side uh, has its hazards. On the other hand, if the people coming through town weren't hell bent for leather to get to where they're going. Uh, it seems to me that it's it's a lot to ask of people to park behind the town office instead of parking in front of the lyceum or the library. I mean, you're giving up a lot of parking spaces for not very many. And, you know, if we're going to have people park behind the town office, then I think we need to stripe the parking lot and... Um, make it obvious where people can park because you know if we make people park parallel to the curb in the village where the lyceum and the library are then we're losing a lot of parking spaces and I wonder whether that's the solution or whether we try and figure out how to get people to not drive like bats out of hell through the village. I wonder if a, just having a line down the center of the street uh, might be a better, uh, uh, more of a help than changing the parking because you don't, you, a lot of people headed towards Cleveland Hill Road are way over in the middle and so yes, it does make it difficult to back out, but I agree, we don't, we need more parking if anything. I, I, I'm in a short comment. I agree with you, totally. And the, the perfect solution in my mind would be to stripe the road, to stripe the parking spaces. However, every time you, you even whisper a word of that, it comes with great uh, distaste because the village would be changed and it's, they don't want the... So you're kind of like damned if you do and damned if you don't. Do people still feel like that's the question? And one of the things about more parking is we've discussed a little bit about making more parking up back where the large pile of loam sits up there to make that into a larger parking area as well. Because, I mean, there is an obvious need for more parking. A lot of times if people that are... The, the library is very good. All of their employees always park over here and walk over to the library. So they're not parking in front. That's not always the case at every establishment. So, um, yeah, it's some of its education. When somebody wants to take five minutes or ten minutes to drop off a library book or to run into the other store, that it takes going to take five minutes or ten minutes to go from there to this establishment. If you're I, don't, I don't disagree. <laughs> yeah. um, you know. Uh, well, so what I would say is. When I, a while back at the planning board meeting, I remember there being a talk that there wasn't enough handicap accessibility in town. And I would just think that if you're going to limit the amount of people that can actually park where the places are, are they going to all become handicap places? Or are, I mean, I don't know. There's not that many places for the handicap accessibility in town anyway. So if you're going to take away spaces, I would imagine you'd want to at least keep the same amount of handicap accessibility spots, so I would just look at that, I guess. I wouldn't shrink them. No, no I, I wouldn't. I mean, if anything, right. you want to add to that, That's what I mean. that possibility. Yeah, um, so, and then they might all be becoming handicap spots to do that, so I would just look at that when you're thinking about it. Willie, has there ever been a uh, committee for, in the village as far as the work on any kind of 
traffic flow through the village or packing or anything? Has there ever been something uh, for a few people to get involved in? The um, Tamworth Village Association, when it was first formed, did some uh, drawings and studying, trying to make it a nice village. They were going to bury the power lines, you know, a whole bunch of stuff that was going to happen. And some of it didn't happen. I right. mean, obviously, it's changed from the times when we were young. There were yeah. more people around. There were more businesses around. Right. Um, and that's part of the problem is, is, you know, anybody can come in and create whatever they want on Main Street, but not be required to provide parking for it. So, I mean, we're, we're stuck in that position of, you know, uh, nobody wants to control what someone can do. So, this is the result. Really. Dave. I would have other concerns about the number of parking spaces that will be lost and the number of handicapped parking spaces that will be lost. To reply to the question, when the Tamworth Village project was done, there was a, a traffic count and a parking count, and Jack Meyer did design a plan, and we acquired the lot behind the town and gave it to the town, or transferred it to the town to build a parking the parking lot back there. So at that time, it was sufficient. And Jack Meyer's plan did get implemented with the trees. And didn't have anything to do with barrier. I mean, the power lines did not get buried, but that did not impact the number of parking spaces or the traffic counts that were done at that time. Um, I have a couple of other questions I would ask. Is there a definition for um, where the barn farmer lot is? Because they have head-in parking on the side of that lot. Is that now? going to become all um, parallel parking as well? There's I, I, a question I don't know. Um, they, they do use the east side of their building for head-in parking, which I guess goes away if that's part, still part of the road. Well, I don't know if it is part of the road. That, that's my question. The is actual it, property line there of the barnstorm was a little bit of a question exactly where it lays. Um, I think they probably are on their own property parking, they have to be honest. Ron Remick did do a bunch of surveys, and so that, that answer is available. I'm just, I don't know whether that got, I don't know where they're parking versus where their line is. Um, and I, do, I do have a couple of other comments. Go ahead, Dave. It's okay. Um, so in 106A, um, there's a comment about uh, not parking in the travel lanes, and I was wondering um, how the travel lanes are, de are defined. In some cases, we have one-lane bridges, and does that mean that the road is a one-lane bridge all the way up and down? Which is, I think that's undefined and <coughs> will become problematic. Um, and then uh, under 107... Dave, that's always going to be problematic if you don't have line, lines in the road. But if you don't even have, if you don't even say are the roads yeah. two lane roads or one lane roads, and what I mean, if you're going to say you can't park in the travel lane, in the travel portion of the lane, then you have to say what that is. I would think. In section 107, um, it says from November 1st to May of each year. I think you probably want a number in, after May to say is it May 1st? Is it May 31st? So that's that the definition. Okay. Um, and then in section 301 and 302, you're talking about uh, off-road vehicles and exceptions that might have been adopted by the selectmen under RSA 215A6 or 15 or 215C8. Has that, have any of those been designated, so designated? my knowledge, there's no record of it. Okay. So then, that's, so no crossing of streets or traveling on streets by those type of vehicles. That's as far as I know. Okay. Um, the the <coughs> references to crosswalks and sidewalks, is there a definition of where the designated crosswalks and sidewalks in town are? I think they have to be painted on the road, so therefore they would only be in Chicago Village. 
the school. School. And the school. And the school. And the school. Okay, yeah, the road there, yes. Um, some of those things, if you do. But those are also state roads. Right. So then there are no town crosswalks. Is that what I'm understanding? Correct. Don't you have a crosswalk in uh, Santiago, in 25? It's a town road. There's no crosswalk. Oh, state road. State road. State road. By the church? Yeah, but there's no, no crosswalk. There's no crosswalk. Oh, crosswalk. Okay. Yeah. yeah. And then I just have one other comment that's not really addressed in here, but um, winter road closings. Um, my understanding is you guys don't have the authority to close roads in the winter because that has to be adopted by town meeting. And that's, um, RSA 231 81. And my, my, we, the road committee has investigated all of the town actions, and I, we can't find any that you so designated. I know that's not relevant here, but since you talked about the policy, I thought it would be matter. Thank Further you. Further comments? Just John. one one piece. Um, going back to the parking issue in the village, I, I just would like to say I think a little congestion is a good thing. <laughs> that if, um, if the roads widened up, uh, someone made a comment a little while ago about the speeds through the village. Open that. The wider the road is, the faster the speeds are going to be through the village, and people just people need to learn that it's congested and people walk and you have to look before you look before you go. Well, I think the problem with that though is that you have so many people coming from out of town that aren't going to learn as they go, or that are just not even going to really think about it. Well, that's what we have a police force for. But there, I don't, I mean, so the other, I mean, there's a lot of problems, I think, with the center of town. When I think of par parking, I think about the person that I saw on a regular basis park on the bridge last winter. And, you know, it's just like all the time. And maybe I should have called the town cop, <laughs> you know, but then I'm just being the narc, right? So <laughs> probably not going to do that. But, you know, it just, without lines, without really saying this is, where you park, this is not where you park. <coughs> people, would I ever park on the bridge? No, I would never park on the bridge. Would most people park on the bridge? Probably not. But some people are going to, because they're just going to run in for a minute. So. And they also park right in front of the fire hydrant. <coughs> well, right. <laughs> I wonder if addressing the uh, speed limit signs might be helpful. I know I live right up over the hill on Cleveland Hill, the first little bump. And the 30 mile an hour speed limit sign is at my driveway. And then you don't hit the 20 mile an hour until you come over that hill. Well, going over that hill is where everybody's got a good amount of speed coming in. And so maybe if you had it down here at the Great Hill, you know, just slow village, another sign. You know, it's at 20 miles or 15 miles an hour um, might be helpful. My mind just went to those cute little things that they have that look like kids walking. Right. Just, yeah. You know, just part, putting some in the village for a little while just to really make people aware. They don't go away, you know, it's 24-7 and there could always be people walking the street. You yeah. know, the library's open. You mentioned before in the summer months that it wouldn't hurt to have those stanchions out in the middle that are just kind of like something that's in the middle of the road. People acknowledge there's something there and might make them think twice and slow down going through the village. They have a hard time getting it through here because mm -hmm. of backing out, but a, little, but a, few, a few up on either end wouldn't hurt to help slow people down. I think it, the farmer's market puts out theirs, and it does a you know, fairly decent job in getting people's attention. Anything further? With nothing further, I'm going to close the public hearing, <coughs> and I'm going to make a recommendation that we go back and look at it and take in the uh, public comment. Good. Public comments that we so will we address this again. Thank you for I mean, your comment. One, one of the things I'd just like to say is some of the issues that come up is we now have uh, food trucks that set up in, on the side <coughs> of the road. So I mean, there's a lot more different items that are coming, and it's. Now, you hate to regulate people, but unfortunately, not everybody thinks before they park or 
before they go down a road. And oftentimes, it's even local people that are going too fast. It's not just the farmers. So. Alrighty, moving on. Department and committees. Richard. Good. Um, it's going good. I've been dealing with the storms, the snow. We've been getting, um, still doing a lot of the, when we can in between storms, the bush cutting and the tree cutting on roadside, chipping it up and hauling the stuff down to the transfer station and doing the regular maintenance on the vehicles and staying with that. And it's going pretty good. It is. Super. You know, I don't really have anything else. And Board have anything uh, for? You did get your estimate, which you turned in on the alarm. I did, yes. I did, yeah, for the, for the system at the town garage. Thank you for that. Yep. Just one question for Richard. How's your uh, salt supply holding up this winter, Richard? It is, because we have the small <coughs> building, and we can only get in a couple of trail loads at a time. It's, yeah, it's, it's, we're about right in the middle of what we usually are right now. You know, that everybody thinks that, you know, when you get that six inch storm, that's the only storm that you treat. But you have so many treatable storms that, you know, by the time most people are up in the morning, we've already been out and treated them and it's gone, whether it be a half an inch or a quarter inch. And the big thing is, like I said before, that for us is to get out before the buses go and everybody going to work. It's just, and we've had a lot of treatable storms. So we had a lot of snow, no, but we've had a lot of ice, we've had a lot of rain, we've had a lot of treatable storms. I guess that's a good way to put it. Yeah. You know, but other than that, the sand's holding up pretty good, and yeah, it's going good. The young fellow in Chicago Village that takes care of the sidewalks, is he, is that a contractor? He, no, he's part-time. He's part-time town employee? Yep. Yeah. Yeah. He works there and he helps us in the week if we need a hand. We're very lucky to have him. Yeah, yeah. He does a good job. He saves yeah. us a lot. Mm -hmm. well, he, he does he a good job at the townhouse. Yeah, nice. he's done an excellent job. Yeah. Did your snow plowing policy help with this last run about people? Uh, not really. Let's not go there. No, it, it was okay. You know, some people are, but I'm going to see some of them again. Okay. I saw some, and I'm just going to go see them again. It, it did help in some instances, and some it didn't, but... Some people can be pretty good at it, I guess that's a good way to put it. If we have to, maybe a letter from here needs to go to Yeah, we all just have Dana visit them. That usually helps <coughs> out. <laughs> Dana's usually pretty good under his force. They're, they're very good about helping out with that. Public comment, John. Uh, just, Richard, do you have a handle on whether your year-to-year -year salt usage is it increasing, decreasing? or? It, it, it just depends on the winter. You know, it's... Um, Right now, we're about in the middle for the rest of the winter. And usually from here on out, it, we don't use as much as a rule yeah. once you start getting the warm weather as far as that. We're, just, we're usually between 600 and 900 ton for the winter. And to put that in perspective, just for people to know, that we had a storm early this winter, and the state shed and used 450 tons in one storm. So just... And we have half of that in my corner. <laughs> no, but, no, I'm just, no, no, so people have an idea where I'm coming from. We, we try to get by with one tree from a storm. We do, on the paved roads. That's, you know, does it always work out? No, but that's a big thing. You know, Willie, people have mentioned, you know, we try to cut back and we try to save on the salt. I'm not a big fan of it, but you have to use it to keep those roads cleaned up. You do. <clears throat> so yeah, if we get people slow down, what need us? Well, right? I know, I hear you, but they're not going to. No, you know, I wish they would. Yeah, I mean, it would it help out, but get some decent tires on their cars. All right, anything further from Richard? <laughs> Jim, fire department. Things going fine. There you go. <laughs> I like it, man. A few words. People, people still calling. People still getting hurt. Anything from the board for the fire? Oh, Richard, I'm sorry. I'm <laughs> you can you, you ask him. If you take it back. Richard! Everything's going fine. <laughs> I don't remember if I gave you stats for December or not, so I did them again, left them right on my desk. We did 56 calls in December, 39 were medical, 8 were motor vehicle accidents, 1 building fire, and the rest were in good intent or service call type deal, false alarms. <coughs> Everything's going good. Engine 5 is totally in service now, the new truck. We had a little snag with a piece of equipment and got straightened out. Um, everything's going good. Thank you. Anything from the public for? Yes. Yeah, I was just wondering, that big fire at Sears, yes, was that, that was in Tamworth, right? Yes, ma'am. 
And I was going to ask how the new truck worked. If it, you know, I mean, if everything, usually there are some little hiccups or something, but how did it, you know, if everything went good with that? <coughs> Hate to say it, but the new truck was not used at that fire. It happened. You saving it? 11:30, uh, something like that during the day. So the problem is getting personnel there. Um, West Ossipee is on automatic, of course, because they can beat us there. So that was the first engine in. Immediately had center us because they had a full-time crew, so they got there before I did. Dana got there before I did and took some good pictures. The building was totally gone before we got there. Um, unfortunately, he lost a lot. But no one got hurt. And fire didn't get any bigger than what it was when we got there. Unfortunately, it was just ripping when we got there. So the truck hasn't been used on anything? No, it's been to a bunch of car racks since. That's primarily what it's set up for. Um, for a structure fire, that's not going to be the first piece that we send anyways. That truck was used. It brought hose ramps down because we laid four inch so vehicles can get over that hose. And we had enough people there. We went to a second alarm, so that truck was staffed and went to West Ossipee. I can't remember what the call was. They covered something in Madison while they were there. One other thing is that um, it's been a few weeks, but um, Don Hutchins, when he passed away, it was sad that there was no fire or police. I mean, he was, you know, involved in both, and there was nobody there for the funeral. I, yep. I mean, it just, he put a lot of time, you know, for both fire and police. I mean, I think he was a special years ago and stuff. Yeah. But that's all. All right, police department. Uh, just a minute, Dave. Uh, Dan, listen. <laughs> Frank, you can call me Frank. Uh, Tuesday, Richard gave me a nice tour of the fire station with the new fire truck. It's quite a piece of equipment. Um, kind of close on the roof, getting it in. They got it in. I don't know if they can get it out. But uh, pretty nice piece of equipment, I think, we got there for all the, for the money. So uh, it was interesting. Is this the time to discuss uh, ambulance or rescue? No? Yes. Okay. Um, are we s I spoke with Richard about this for a few minutes over the air, and um, uh, well, Richard, you can explain what you kind of told me. The um, so CIP said that's a our ambulance. You can call it a rescue vehicle, whatever. Ever since I've been on, going back to years, it's a rescue vehicle, but it has the capability to transfer, which I think is a wise decision because we only have three ambulances, and even with a new contract, so one good car accident, you're tying them up, so call it whatever you want. <clears throat> the truck we have is a 2006. Last year, we spent 3800 and change maintenance on it. It is in good shape. CIP has it slotted 2020 to replace it. Um, we can probably get a couple more years out of it. CIP also had the Tahoe to be replaced 2020. It's got about 65,000. Um, I don't know what we spent on it last year, not much, but that truck's in very good shape. So we do not have that article on. And even in my town report, I said, right now that ambulance is fine. And I think it's going to be fine for another two or three years. There's just some surface rust. It's aluminum, but it's all pitted up from... It's not in bad shape at all. It's, we had a problem that it took forever for them to figure out, but they got it fixed last year. My only concern would be is if we kick it down the road um, and then have to replace the Tahoe and the ambulance, you know, that trickle-down effect. So if CIP says, no, the next five years is this, 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 but in my town report I kind of wrote it up that it's up to you guys. Right now that thing is fine. It could die tomorrow. Pretty doubtful. I think we can get a couple more years out of it. It's in very good shape. We're going to be going over the, the Warren articles. You're going to stay for that, right? Because we're going to talk about some of your... Somebody is. Yeah, okay. I will. Yeah, we're going to talk about that. Okay. okay. Yeah. Police Department. Uh, January's been a pretty quiet month uh, for the most part. Uh, did cover an accident uh, this afternoon. Two vehicles, one backing out from the Lyceum, one backing out from the town office, backed into each other. <laughs> so, coincidentally, uh, you know, not on the wood, we actually don't cover a lot of those, uh, but it happened, and I, two out-of-towners, and 
both with their backup cameras in their thing, and they just kind of met at the same blind spot. <laughs> All about timing, so uh, minor damage and, and no issues. Um, but, you know, and then it was mentioned to me, somebody else that was nearby, about, you know, having the angle, angle parking, you know, so angle park this way for the town office and then opposite, you know, for the other building so that people can go and make the loop and come back and park and angle into the live scene. Not a bad suggestion. Again, it comes down to the discussion of painting lines and that whole concern, which I get and understand. And if there's something that could be aesthetically pleasing to match the village and still meet the needs of having lines, that would be a great idea. Maybe we could use like recycled uh, glass to put into the pavement or something. They won't step on that. Oh, for the, yeah. Yeah, they yeah. cut back on the, how many, the vehicles the road. Yeah. Yeah, well, the angle would feather it to be you know, a wider breadth between, um, for the main road. So, I don't know, just something for discussion to continue to have. Um, and then, I, you guys, I guess, changed the Warren article for the cruiser um, down to 35. I know I continue to advocate best vehicle is uh, the Tahoes. Um, so I did a little research because I've been hearing rumors from other departments that are purchasing vehicles about the um, Dodge Chargers, which are the only sedans on the market right now for police package vehicles, which are just stripped down stock vehicles. Um, so I called the dealership that has a state bid, was awarded again the state bid this year, uh, which is Hillsborough Price of Dodge. And I spoke with the, the sales rep there. He said that because Ford did away with the sedan and other things, um, their projected build out, they build out a, a parts for the uh, vehicles ahead of time and they project how many they're going to sell. Well, they, they shorted themselves because the demand went up and they're out of transmissions uh, for the charges. So right now, they're taking orders that can't be fulfilled till 2021. Um, right, they're pushing their Dodge Durango, which is new to the market for police package. I did some research on it with the last vehicle. Um, it's not quite up to specs, I think, for police package vehicles, but and I haven't seen any out there yet. But anyway, just something to reconsider. I don't really think, you know, we're going to get anything for that money. Um, and if so, we're looking at well over a year before it can even be built, so. What was the price for the Dodge if they had transmissions through the state bid? The state, state bid? Pack, with, package. You mean just the... Like, just the kind of stuff. Yeah, the cars, they're like 23 and change, 23.8 or something like that. That's the state bid price. And then um, another what? Kind of that was last year's state bid price. I don't know what it is now. Um, I was told that the Durangos, they pushed up to 28.5, or they're offering like a price cut on those to try to... Uh, make the make up for the shortage on the chargers. So, though, if there was transmissions, we could get an all-wheel drive sedan like the state police use, studded snow tires, probably have it fully equipped for the town of Tamworth for 35, 34. You don't, yeah. You don't think a sedan's going to work? I don't know if it's the best vehicle all around for versatility. I mean, I, like I said before, I, you know, run into situations where we have to drive on people's driveways that aren't plowed, and the time and effort that it saves, and having you know somebody to be able to drive up to the house rather than having to trudge up into the snow and take the risk of getting hurt or delay the time of response. I just the only is, Dana, where they're not assigned vehicles, and you need a towel. Why can't you grab the Tahoe? Somebody else can use the sedan if it's that big an emergency to, like you yeah. said last year at town meeting, serve papers on Great Hill or Cleveland Hill, and Richard does a pretty good job uh, keeping the roads open, and I would think serving papers could wait until 7 or 8 in the morning. Yeah, I understand the mindset. I mean, most vehicles are, you know, set up in the morning when they come on duty with their gear and everything, so... You know, for them to swap out their duty bags into a different cruiser. It well, just my mind just went to, too, you're not going to know if a driveway's plowed until you get to it. Because the road's going to be plowed. Richard takes care of the roads, but, I mean, everybody takes care of their own driveway. 
So if it's a long driveway, you're going to go back and get the other vehicle and then... Like my argument really too is, is the, the price difference you get, you're going to get more <coughs> endurance out of the vehicle. You're going to get a little more longevity. Daniel, um, is this a replacement vehicle for yes. next year? Yes. One that is solely needed, desperately needed. The one that you have ordered now, is that a replacement or just the third year? It's an addition. addition. I just think it's time to try a city in, see how it works for the town, instead of having to buy a Tahoe for $50,000 every time we need a police cruiser. When we already got, how many we got total, Dana? I would request $45,000 if we're going to go, because we can at least carry some of the equipment over from the current Tahoe. Whereas if we go in a sedan, we really won't be able to carry much over, if anything. Maybe the radar. I don't know. Those state troopers, they carry as much stuff as a small town of Stanley's carry. That's I'm not saying that. The, I just mean the actual equipment that is made to fit within, like the console. That's mm -hmm. not the kind of thing we're trying to try. So we have more. Yeah, the cages, all that stuff. None of that's going to transfer over. Our flight car won't be. Well, you might, you might have to if you don't get the money. Understandable. Yeah. Anything further? All right, moving on. Economic development. <coughs> yeah, uh, we had a meeting last night, actually, and a lot of most everyone was there, which is great. We have a new board member, which I think that there's a, there's going to be a paper for you all to report. Uh, that's Laura Pike, which we're really, as you a lot of you might know, she lived here a long time ago, and then she came back. So we're happy that she could be part of our board. Um, we talked about um, a little bit about the skating thing that I mentioned last meeting. And I've been getting input from today, actually, from um, the CLC people regarding what this idea and that idea and whatever, and, and, and sources to call to find out maybe how do they handle things, and also suggestions what if the first year we just had a smallish rinky kind of thing on the lake, and then see how that goes, and then deal with well, how do we then plow around for other things. And I didn't know this, but I found out that the fire department can find out how thick the ice is. Is that right? Can what? The can fire department it? can find out how thick the ice is. Can you measure the chainsaw or an auger? Could, but the I'm wrong going out there. <laughs> the they'd have to see. Oh, oh. Okay. I don't know the details. You might have seen us swimming in the lake a couple of times. <laughs> that, was it. That, was it. that was it. That was it. That was it. We are actually looking for the stuff that you have fallen through. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Uh, anyway, so we're, there's a lot of details, but we've got a lot of people that now know about it, and that was the point. And um, so anyway, so that's a future thought. I don't think it will happen this year, but it would be great if we could plan appropriately for next year. Um, let's see. Also, we talked a little bit about wet paint, and that's coming up before you realize it. And that's uh, April 27th to May 3rd. And we're looking forward to, um, we've got some great artists that are <coughs> And so I think you will all enjoy it. It will be the, the, I think it's the fourth year now. I think everyone will enjoy it. And that's sort of about it. We've probably talked about other things, but I forgot them. <laughs> Anything more for the economic development? Public comment? Can I Fred? Ask, oh. oh, sorry. Can I just, um, have you guys looked into insurance about this, the ice skating? Um, no. If it's a lake, and I, do we own the lake? I mean. No. no. Do we have insurance for the lake at White? White yeah. Lake for people swimming. Are we supposed to? <coughs> no, I don't think so either. No. The answer is no. Okay. <laughs> I'd assume that you would have maybe like signs on the lake that say "Enter at your own risk." Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. In the winter. When it comes to that, I mean, yeah. Danger. Yeah. Or thin ice. Thin <laughs> ice. <laughs> <laughs> the lake. You want to walk on it? That's your really problem. You got people out there ice fishing all the time. Yeah. I know. Yeah. There's somebody's out there now. Friends of the townhouse. Just, we've been busy. I know that um, I think the farmer's market had over 220 on Saturday. Very busy. <laughs> For January, and it was cold out. <laughs> but I walked, I drove through the village, and it, there was so many people walking. I mean, it's busy. That's a good thing. Yeah, very good. Linda, can you send me your numbers for December for my other oh, hat? Yes. <laughs> yep, yep. The septic <laughs> system. For December. Okay. For December, yes. yeah. Yes. yes. <clears throat> Can I just make one mention? At the first <coughs> farmer's market, somebody left a red jacket at the townhouse. And it has car keys in it to a Hyundai. 
And it's still there. And, it, and it's still there. Oh, wow. the, it's a Honda. The, <laughs> no, no, that's not. Just but just on the, the like the lanyard that it's on, it's it's a breast cancer survivor lanyard. Mm -hmm. But and there's a great umbrella there too. <laughs> you sure the person's still not in the building? Yeah. Yeah. There's, oh, there's also a pair of flip flops and a scarf. So. <laughs> If anybody's looking for their stuff, it's there. All righty. Yeah. We got everybody. Admin will do you later. Yeah. The selectment updates. And now let's move on to appointments. Recycling Committee. I'm Ellen Barnum, and I'm here with some other Tamworth Recycling Project members. And we want to just talk briefly about some of the things we've done this winter. One of the things is we have been working regionally with the... Um, Dave Babson with the Carroll County Commissioners and uh, trying to find regional solutions for recycling. It's such a complex problem and it, it's, it's uh, affecting more than just our small town. So we held a big meeting. Um, we had about 26 people come. There were members of our <coughs> team. We had a Susan Ticehurst, our legislature, came. We had uh, people from the Solid Advi Waste Advisory Board, the Ac Economic Development PAC came, which was great, terrific. And we invited the select boards and all the surrounding towns. Um, and basically, I've sent you this information. Um, you should have received a packet, so I'm not going to go into a whole lot of that information. But just spend a minute talking about some of the recommendations that were made. Um, and the other most important piece I forgot to say is running this meeting were, um, uh, was Paige Wilson from Lake Surgeon Planning Commission. She was the one that was really helping us out. And we had by phone Bonnie um, Bethune mm -hmm. from uh, and NRRA, the Northeast Resource Recovery Association. So there was a lot of incredible information and brainstorming that was happening during that meeting. And for recommendations, one of the things that I thought was really exciting is that Paige Wilson from the Lakes Region Planning Commission has agreed to work with us and other surrounding towns to try to get competitive contracts. Um, if we could develop a standardized contract, uh, if we could post and look at each other's contracts to see when they become due. And it would just, contract sharing would just has the potential to save us all a lot of time and money. And um, that, I thought that was really exciting. Another thing is that we um, see the need to uh, involve the most important members of the recycling waste management system, which is our, our supervisors such as Glenn and all of those folks that work directly in you know the sanitation department and all of that so Paige Wilson has set up a, a big forum for and that's happening February 6th in Meredith and uh, transfer station members can get uh, DES credits <coughs> But it's also going to be an exciting time to talk about regionalized uh, ideas, such as could we develop a glass crushing site that was closer by that would maybe save us all money. So those are some of the things we're going to hear from the experts um, during that meeting and see what they come up with. And we also talked about developing a list of legislative requests. Our team is really intent on getting people um, oh, be, having, helping people become aware of what is out there for legislation that would help us, such as a plastic bag ban would help us considerably in our state, and um, write letters, and uh, we encourage, of course, the selectmen to become involved in those kinds of legislative issues. And uh, last but not least, and probably a, a, it, what's going to comprise a big part of our time in the spring is we want to look at uh, how we would get funding to do some upgrades on uh, our own transfer station here in Tamworth. One of the ideas would get to make use of um, the resources we have through Lakes Region Planning Commission and then RRA to do a site plan to, which could you know, really save us some 
time and money if we had the, the transfer station laid out in a great way. And also we want to look at how we could get a bailer. Um, Kelly brought a, a, a handout for you all that basically talks about if you, if, that there really are still markets available where you could make recycling cost effective. But in order to do so, you need to have a product that they want. And one of the things that would really help Glenn out, this was his request ages ago, would be to have a baler. So we're going to be looking at um, working both within the town and asking for grants, writing grants, and we'll tell you more about that later when we have more information. But it's our hope that we could help out um, with that. If, if stuff to add, y'all? I just want to say that I just would like to keep the conversation open about maybe collaboration happening to allow these markets to happen. So right now we don't have a bailer, but like Tuftonboro and Wolfboro do. Could it be something that they're actually interested in our plastic because there is such a great market for it right now that we could start separating it out and selling it to these other towns that have these resources to make it worth $1,120 a ton, way better than aluminum. I mean, they might actually really want it. Um, so it just, I don't know, I think it is worth having it be part of the current conversation, even though we don't have a bailer, just to be aware that there is a very active market for these resources. They are being recovered and used and used domestically. And that market's just going to continue to get better. Um, Nine Dragons just bought nine different paper mills all throughout the Northeast for recycling mixed paper. So that market is going to really open up within the next year. And my just when I saw this, I was very excited because it's like, oh yay, there's a market for recycling. But also, um, this is something that comes from the NRRA, and I just happened to be watching one of their presentations and saw this these figures. We don't have access to contact the NRA and get these numbers, but we citizens, don't. We we citizens, citizens. Yeah. and that's what our group is. We're just a group of committed citizens, and um, so just to wonder, like, who is watching these markets, whose responsibility is it to inform us of them, or is it <coughs> us needing to be informed? Just a little more clarity on who follows that market. And I, I would tie into that that uh, Glenn told me that we just had our first load of uh, metal cans went to the recycler. Yep. Um, over four, over two tons. Yep. Correct. So that was weight uh, weight that was kept out of solid waste. It was like forty six hundred pounds. And can we thank like Aaron Ricker again <laughs> for picking it up at no cost to the town? Right. Yes. Yeah, which is definitely. And you um, might want plastic. But our question. <laughs> 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 so, but Glenn did not know what the town got paid for that. So that's the kind of thing. Which I, I know, I'm not putting you on the spot. I'm just saying that that's the kind of thing that might be helpful, you know, for Glenn or for the committee helping Glenn, whatever, to, to know what prices are that we're getting currently able to get and what the prices are that we could get with the better connections. I did just want to point out that on that graph, um, it does say what we are currently shipping out for just regular landfill. And just while... At the very bottom, it says just regular trash. Um, and I just wanted to also just touch on that during that presentation, That's they really right made a point to say that we're running out of landfill space. Um, it's like 95% full, and we don't have any legislation right now that allows for any new landfills in the next five years. 50% um, of our landfill usage is by out of state. Um, people, Massachusetts, Rhode Island, a lot of other states ship their trash in. But we're probably going to run out of landfill space before that five year. So something's going to have to be solved. And basically Tamworth is just putting a lot of their stuff into the landfill and just going to create a bigger problem when there are active solutions right now to reduce that amount of landfill. And once it goes in a landfill, it doesn't like get recycled later. It just is going to stay there for an eternity. So it's just filling up needed space that 
you know, we have a problem anyway that the state has to figure out. They're really, I mean, that's why the presentation happened, because they're in a real pickle right now. <laughs> yeah. There are some um, things happening on that. Uh, oh, it's going to have to happen. Front. Um, but, I, yeah, I have a list here. But we can still do our part, you know, and just own that we also don't have to be putting everything into the landfill that we don't need to. One of the thoughts of working with Dave Babson on these regional solutions is perhaps we could set up a, a, a clearinghouse for information where we could get market shares more directly and share that as a resource among towns. Although, as Kelly said, it is already available from NRRA. But that, that's some of the th these are some of the issues we'll be talking about at the forum with uh, the real <coughs> experts, our transfer station people. And we'll, we'll for sure be back and report on some more recommendations that we have for the town. And then one more just brief topic related. We had a request from you on the select board to have a table at the town meeting on hazardous waste collection. And we have requested a table and do plan to do some community education about hazardous waste. Who's going to the moderator about that, Chris Campbell? Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yes. Because he's actually in charge of that. Quick, just a quick point. Would you talk about the re the resale place? Oh, oh yeah. 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 I feel like that's too young to talk about, really, Pat. Okay. Um, there's a company called Restore. Um, it's a national organization, but they actually have been sort of looking for a region or for a location in this sort of region for a store. They have one in Plymouth and they have one in Newington. Um, they'd like to get up into this sort of neck of the woods. Um, more so. to follow. More to follow, yeah. That means very little <laughs> Perfect. Yeah. Thank you so much no for the update. That was great. Thank you for all you do. Moving on. I guess I, I'd like to make a comment on the recycling thing. Um, it would be great to have all of these things, and the town's going to have to build the infrastructure to make it happen. The product is not worth anything unless it is baled, kept dry, kept ready to go, and a full <coughs> load sent out. And, you know... Full load, 20 ton. Right. So, I mean, it's big. So it means, it means a building... It means more staff, it means a baler, it means a, a lift to lift these bales and move things around. So it is something that I think the town really needs to focus at. Uh, do we want our infrastructure to be able to handle this? I mean, we look at these things and you look at the, the, the plastic, it's great, but to get the plastic from here to Meredith, Wolfboro, or Tufton Borough, you're going to need a truck to drive it over there. You're going to lose more and cause more environmental damage probably by hauling it over there than you would get in money to return it. So, I mean, it, there's that whole dynamic of the financial and actual um, environmental impact of moving the material. Once it's bailed, you're golden. You can make money. But until it's bailed, it's really a pretty tough... Just Tough to thing. clarify what you just said, Willie, if it's bailed, it would be <coughs> worth your while to move it. But while it's loose plastic, it's too expensive to move. Right. I mean, I don't just know. I think in a 10-wheeler, you might be able, if you were lucky, to get, I don't know, I'm just going to take a wild guess, 600 pounds loose, maybe. Um, you know. Yeah, but that's for further discussion. Right. So, I mean, but what I, my <laughs> point is, is the town's going to have to yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. put money into it. We'll, we'll be reporting yeah. on this. And I do think that there's yeah. talk about collaboration in the towns. Like, do all these small towns need to have these expensive horizontal balers, or could we collaborate? Are there, you know, buildings already vacant that could be used for dry storage? You know, I mean, Dave Babson is very excited about looking into how we can work together as towns, but I do think that it would be in Tamara's best interest to be involved in any of that collaboration sure. that happens. All right, moving on. Thomas Gross, Saco Headwaters Alliance. Thank you. Thomas, welcome. Pleasure to be here. Thank you, Darlene, uh, for this invitation. Uh, it's a perfect segue to talk about recycling and then talk about protecting our water, which they certainly are related. And uh, I'm here to bring you an invitation and tell you a little bit about what we're trying to do as a new organization. Uh, the invitation is 
the Sagua Headwaters Alliance is working with a number of municipalities on a collaborative basis uh, to put together what we're calling a Municipal Leaders Water Summit less than 12 months from now in collaboration with the Hampshire <coughs> DES, the watershed program people in particular, Deb Wazell and Steve Landry, who head up the watershed division. And the notion is uh, to uh, spend a little time together and uh, share <coughs> agendas and priorities and funding sources and walk away with uh, some potential <coughs> agreements about next steps where we can fund municipal priorities with state monies and federal monies. Uh, and that's part of what we're about at the Saco Headwaters Watershed. And now, we have a steering meeting uh, planned uh, with uh, some representatives, and we have an invitation for you if you're interested to join us as well. At the end of March, on either the 25th <coughs> or the 26th, a specific date to be determined, uh, we're bringing together uh, municipal leaders who have the interest to help us design this agenda. Uh, the DES folks will be at this meeting, at this planning meeting, and uh, we really want to craft a very <coughs> productive dialogue. We want to listen from all parties. Uh, it's not a telling session, it's finding common ground and finding the money where we can fund things, including how we deal with this uh, recycle issue, which has a huge impact on our water, particularly uh, groundwater. And uh, coincidentally, I was just at your neighbor town, uh, not too far away, Waterville Valley, uh, with Mark Dakota, who is the town manager there. I met him for the first time, lovely guy, uh, very informed, uh, and he highlighted uh, the same issue. And they're in a more difficult position because Bethlehem is closing, and so at the moment they don't have a solution with what they're going to do with their solid waste. It sounds sort of like you're, you're familiar with that issue. Uh, so, uh, at the end of this discussion, I have a little sheet. If any of you would like to learn more, uh, please give me your, your contact information. I'd love to follow up with you in, individually. I know you've got a very tight schedule tonight, and I appreciate you squeezing me in, so I will definitely stay within the 15 minutes. Good. Or if you want to yank me sooner, just <laughs> <laughs> let me know. Uh, now, just so you know who uh, is going to be at this meeting in March already, uh, and, I, and I hope you're interested in joining us, Jason Gagnon, Superintendent, North Conway Water Precinct, who's also a member of our newly formed Saco Headwaters Alliance Board. Mark Dindorf, Chairman of uh, the Selectmen of Hearts Location, also a board member of SHA. And our other HA, SHA directors, and I'll introduce them to you briefly in a moment, uh, Tom Holmes, Tom Manager Conway, uh, Rick Hyland, Chairman of the Selectmen, Albany, uh, Dick Bennett, Chairman of the Planning Commission, Jackson, Mark Dakota, I mentioned Town Manager, Waterville Valley, and I already mentioned Deb Wazell, Steve Landry, and uh, Jim Innes, who is the uh, Senior Ranger for the White Mountain National Forest, who has a large part of this uh, uh, watershed uh, in, in protected uh, national forest lands. Uh, our mission at the Saco Headwaters Alliance is to protect and conserve abundant and potable ground and surface water sustainably and resiliently within the Saco Headwaters watershed in the face of a changing climate and growing development pressures. And I know that Darlene kindly distributed lots of material to you, uh, so there's hard copy, uh, and of course if you'd like something digital, I'd be happy to share that to you. Uh, the area we're talking about for the watershed uh, begins, if you will, at the source of the Saco uh, to the west of Hart's location and up the Crawford Notch. And then as we move south to Tamworth and Waterville Valley and uh, further south through the Ossipee watershed to the confluence of the Ossipee with the Saco in Hiram, Maine. So we, inc we also have main towns as a part of this watershed. And then north to the Kizar Lake watershed, which spills into the Saco as well. And the reason why we thought it made sense to talk about such a large area uh, that uh, is about 900 to 1,000 square miles is from, since we're, we're really guided by science, we understand and have come to learn, and I'm a layman, so I've come to learn that uh, 
The watershed itself is the source of our clean water because everything is connected. The rivers and the aquifers, the streams into the rivers, the rivers into one another. And, uh, and as we know, there's a lot of migration, uh, including from invasive species across all kinds of boundaries. So from an ecological point of view, this notion that the recycle folks just mentioned a moment ago about working regionally, we've come to learn is an imperative. Uh, a couple of years ago, I did a project uh, in my, wearing my hat at the land trust, the Upper Saco Valley Land Trust, uh, where we uh, rolled out to the towns of the Upper Saco Valley Land Trust the model drinking water ordinance of the state of New Hampshire and uh, results of a potential contamination site survey. And uh, it became so clear to all of us that until every town protects the aquifer, the aquifer is not protected. So this has to happen on a town-by-town -town basis. In that first round, Hart's Location was the first town to implement that statewide drinking water ordinance. Most recently, <coughs> Albany is stepping up. Soon, Jackson is stepping up. So that's, if it's of interest, that's another topic I'd be delighted to discuss with you in the future. Uh, and just to tick off, and there's a lot of information, so how am I doing on the time, Darlene? I actually haven't looked, but I bet Dan's watching. <laughs> <laughs> you got seven minutes. Seven minutes. All right. Let me, let me read these threats quickly, because we're all familiar with them. But it's, we have stormwater runoff. Ninety percent of the pollution of the state comes from stormwater runoff, especially from our roads. Road salt. <laughs> I know we're all challenged by road salt, including the, the heads of the Department of Public Works I've met so far as well. And uh, we all know that this is a pollutant and a necessary safety guard for when we drive on icy roads. So we're, we're really stuck in a, between a hard, rock and a hard place. Nutrients, chemical runoff, aging, failing, and under-regulated septic systems. Droughts, when we get them, actually affect some people's wells. In migration, we've got increasing encroaching development, which probably is only going to increase in time as other parts of the country find water issues and other environmental issues. And we live in one of the most favored geographies of North America. And we are blessed at that. And we'd like to see if we can preserve it. Commercial extraction is not so much an issue in New Hampshire, but some of our neighboring states worry about that. I mentioned potential contamination sites. And then we've got these Scary potential or real uh, forever chemicals that we read about, PFAs and these kinds of things, which have contaminated the Merrimack aquifer, which is about 100 miles south of us. So these threats are not that far away. Um, the state of New Hampshire still has not regulated personal products and pharmaceutical products, which end up in our waste systems, our aquifers through seepage, and so on. Uh, we do know we've got a growing invasive plant and animal species process, whether it's ticks or woolly adelgid or in the waters, uh, Eurasian, Eurasian milfoil. You mentioned solid waste and landfills being overwhelmed. And, of course, uh, we know that uh, fossil fuel uh, production exacerbates these issues. So there's a lot that we are concerned about. Uh, our board of directors is a mix of land trust board members, town leaders I mentioned, like Mark and Jason. Uh, we've got uh, environmental engineers. We've got uh, water rights advocates. We've got uh, the chairman of the Saco and Swift Rivers Local Advisory Council. So it's really a cross-section of organizations all devoted to the same values. So we are trying to build a regional collaboration. Uh, and central to what we are doing at SHA, at the Saco Headwaters Alliance, is really trying to uh, develop trusting relationships with folks like you who are running your municipalities. We've come to understand that you are the authorities and most uh, responsible parties on the front line of protecting our environment. And we know that you are very busy, and we know the town management is very busy, and as a group of uh, volunteers and, and non-volunteers on our board, uh, we're trying to play this facilitated role between the needs of the local municipality, which we share across the watershed, and the sources of money uh, that uh, folks on the state level, as well as on the federal level, and in private foundations share with us. Uh, we've already made some amazing progress since our first meeting in April. 
Um, we got a grant uh, to commence a strategic water monitoring <coughs> project, which is underway. We're assessing the data and the sources of data to know what's going on with the water on our watershed. And then we'll have an action plan to implement those parts of the monitoring that are weak where we don't know the vulnerabilities and we'd like to know what they are so that collectively we can take preventive action. Um, Hart's Location uh, got a $75,000 state revolving fund grant to be approved by the town voters in March uh, for floodplain mapping, a critical tool since they are in the floodplain, so they can make informed scientific-based judgments on permitting. And that's a tool which is critical and a huge need because floodplain maps are out of date from what I've recently learned. Uh, so if we're going to be dealing, and we know that floods are increasing. Is that true here in Tamworth as well over the years? Yeah. We're seeing that across uh, the region. We're seeing it across the country. Uh, we have a pending grant with New Hampshire DES on more outreach to municipalities. Uh, along the lines that we're talking about. And then we've got this Municipal Leader Summit that I hope you have some interest in joining us on. Our guiding principles, we've had multiple conversations of how can we be helpful and what guides us as a new organization. Collaboration, action through projects, it's on the ground work that we're interested in doing, or in the water work, depending upon how you look at it. Uh, Resiliency, we know that the environment is changing, we know storms are increasing, we know development is increasing, we know population is increasing. How do we build resiliency in the face of these changes? Science-based and partnership and respect for municipalities and gratefulness for the work that you do. Uh, we do have some barriers to change, maybe I'm repeating myself because it was mentioned by the colleagues working on Recycle. Uh, we are organized by municipality. The environment is not organized by municipality. And we share an environment. So it behooves us to find ways of collaborating. If we're going to be able to actually protect, and you me mentioned it so perfectly earlier, that uh, the risk of even taking a truck filled with plastic is, is a danger. Uh, watershed problems cannot be solved by working alone. We know that the costs of protection are high. We know that the costs of remediation are much, much higher, and in some cases irreversible. Uh, so at this watershed summit with municipal leaders, we hope to create a shared, fundable set of priorities with as many Saco headwater watershed municipalities who can join us with NHDES in the room, with the National Forest Service in the room, with under, other funders, including EPA, with whom we're they're talking and inviting as well. Uh, we're looking at uh, the 25th or 26th of March. We hope you join us. And uh, if any of you folks would be interested, please do let me have your, your name and, uh, and contact information. And if there are any questions or comments, I'd be delighted to respond if I can. Where are you trying to hold, where are you going to hold this uh, meeting? Uh, we haven't decided yet, but it's most likely going to be in Conway because the uh, North Conway Water Precinct has been very generous in providing us meeting space. Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much for coming in. Appreciate it. Thank you for putting that out such a Information, keep us posted. Sure will. Where are you located out of? Uh, Conway. Okay, so it is Conway. Yeah. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you for the time. I really appreciate it. Thank thank you. Nice night. Thank you. Moving along here to new business. Budget. I guess we want to go over. Thank you. Some questions on the, we're just rehashing, we're not going to go over the whole budget again, but we're going to rehash the ones that we made changes on, right? Right? Yes. Yep. <laughs> so, town administration.
Yeah. You change the part time salary line or the part time line to 24 hours instead of 32 hours a week. Um, what was that? Yes, for assessing. Yes. Kathy, the only thing I had is I don't know when this prints out. Do your comments under your notations under column A show? Yep. And it goes to budget hearing and stuff. I think we usually put the comments on there. Okay. Because the only thing is, is you left it at two, the two staff. Oh yeah. Instead of one and one. I mean, I get the calculations correct. Yeah. So yeah, we don't generally put the comments. Okay. Um. So what else? And I actually should I do it now? Yes. What? I'm going to ask the board if they would reconsider um, having the town report printed at not the prison and somewhere else. Um, Minuteman, well the prison, it has to be copy ready. They will not make any changes whatsoever. Minuteman will take the, the page numbers off the state forms that we include in the, um, in the report. They will um, do the table of contents, put the page numbers on, they'll design the cover, I don't have the equipment to do any of that. Um, they said they would be able to do it for about 1900 and we budgeted 15 And the prison was 15 The printed prison was 15 So for $400, we get a better right. product. And I, mean, I, think the, I think the residents, they asked for more information in the book. So about three or four years ago, it's doubled in size, which, I mean, we certainly can talk about maybe taking some things out, but I think <clears throat> mostly everybody likes what's in there. They like the look of it. They're excited to see the cover. Yeah. Um, I about hate to go back to... Um, they, and they'll staple. They won't... I mean, I, I, still, I still love the coil bomb. It's so much easier to use and open and read. And, um, but expensive. It's expensive. But for, for 90, can we try... 90% of them winding up in the landfill. Mm -hmm. I hope that's no. not true. I think a lot <laughs> of people think theirs. What about the other company that... I didn't talk to them, and I like, I mean, I use Minuteman, we've used them, they're local, um, and if he's willing to do this for us, I'd like to give it a shot, and just have, you know, make it a little different. I agree. Yes. Um, the, out of the four that we had, Minuteman, Staples, Prison, and Concord, the Concord company was second cheapest, and... <coughs> have, and going to back to the other company and saying, "Well, they'll do this, this, this." Have you gone back to the I did not other one and see not. if they would do that? As well? I did not because I'm used to working with Minuteman, mm -hmm. and I just wanted to see what I could get, what other prices were out there because I didn't ask for anybody any cost on no coil, right? You know, so mm -hmm. that doesn't mean I have mm -hmm. to use Minuteman. I would just like a little bit more money to have options. <coughs> I think we've always used Minuteman. I don't, and I don't, I don't know. No, we no. used we Okay, okay we but Minuteman is going to give us a good product. But I've used Minuteman since I've been here. It's not public comment. <laughs> so I have to agree I would go with that. Anything from the board? I would like to see what the other company, I know people that use that other company and it has great products too. What other company? The, the one in, no, there's Concord. two. There's the prison in Concord and then the quality press. Yeah, press, press. That does a great job too that was recommended from other towns that use it for the town report. So what do they charge? They, they were, were a little bit less. But they did give me, they, they were, gave me prices on the coil. 988 and then Minuteman was 2898 But you need to, they were different amounts, so is it the same amount? One was 550 and one was 500 bucks. So we got to make sure that that's, <coughs> that's correct. We me. ran out of books at 500 I thought that year. it was divided by 600 yeah, I mean, I'll certainly ask them <laughs> if they can do it. We can change it at the budget hearing. Hmm? We can change it at the budget hearing if we have more information. I definitely agree <coughs> not with the prison. You what? I agree not to go with the prison. Yeah. I don't yeah. think that they provide a good service. 
So look at the other place. Yeah, Minuteman delivers. I don't know about the other the other place in Concord. I'll pick it up. <laughs> I'm down there enough. So. Okay, look at the okay. other place. Okay. Good. Yes. And the, the other place will set up and take the pages off like Minuteman will do. I, I've got to ask them. I know they'll design the cover. Okay. I did ask them about that. Okay, so that's good with admin. So we're going to leave it though for now. Okay. Okay. Uh, economic development, that was an easy fix. They just moved it. The budget stays the same, but they just moved the line item up and zeroed out. Yep. Next. Police department you took away the two police officers. You cut down on the FICA and all that other kind of stuff. Took away for the uniforms for the two other police officers, the equipment for the other two police officers. Am I missing anything? Did we uh, come to a conclusion on the uh, carpeting or the tile over there that uh, Dana wants? It Was just says flooring. flooring. It's <coughs> just flooring. Yep. Yeah. I mean, okay. I think really it should be tile. I mean, you bring people in there, you don't know what they've got with yeah. them. Okay. Um, I've got a question I, on the uh, grand totals page. If you go to the police department line, it was the 2020 request was uh, five million six hundred. Uh, five million. Yeah, five hundred sixty-three thousand six hundred and three dollars, and then you have in parentheses, which I presume is a subtraction, ninety-seven seven ninety, and then the number of uh, three three hundred ninety seven eighty. If you minus that number it isn't the right number in there. No. no. You said ninety seven, it's seventy nine. Seventy nine. It doesn't matter. It should be two hundred and sixty two thousand eight hundred and thirty two dollars in that parenthesis. I see what you're saying. Okay. Um, it just <laughs> when I but looked his, at it his, I went his that is subtraction correct. isn't right. The number in the uh, revised column appears to be correct. It's just that that doesn't subtract outright, and then I presume that that's going to play all the way down to the bottom numbers um, on that uh, grand total page. Um, and I, down at the bottom, it looked like there was an $88,030 uh, difference in the subtraction line, which isn't the same as that number up there, so this something isn't driving by about 95000 yeah, I think that was the question I had asked you, Kathy, in the office, but I know we were messing around with the numbers trying to figure it out. Oh, pardon? No, she has no voice. So, so, oh, that's right. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Is his individual page right now? <coughs> the individual page is right. It's a grand total page that was wrong. Right. Well, yeah. I mean, I, I didn't okay. go into each one and yeah. go back and forth. But so there were some questions even on the bottom of what the bottom on the grand total, what anticipation anticipated from taxation would be. Um, it just the numbers just didn't add up, and they, when I went back up to the top and added the difference in there, it still came off ninety five thousand. Uh, something different. So, anyway, didn't have it. Yes, that's what I was. That's what I was thinking too. Because I moved the two full time. It's the ninety three, and I moved it here. It is zero. So for this, so for this see over here, um, I think that that number didn't get transferred over. Yeah, the zero is okay, but it's yeah. It's because of the two salary. Can you see it? <laughs> the ninety-three thousand, the first two lines. Right, it's, and then it's you put zeroed it out. Yeah. Right, it was so zeroed out zero because what you did, what you did, what you asked her to do is take out mm -hmm. the two. Um, right, and all of the, so the two officers plus all of their FICA, Social line. Security. That should make zero, and not ninety. That okay, line should make it zero. zero. Okay, that'll fix so, it. That would, yeah. So what I'm showing from the budget of 2019, 
to the budget of 2020, it's an $18,000 increase. Correct? Yes, so from 2019 to 2020, yes, it's about $18,000 increase. Yeah. Yes. But don't forget 27, an extra payroll. Yes, so yeah. you're saying that the $18,000 increase is the, the extra, extra payroll. Payroll. Yeah. payroll and then the yes. in the code. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Any more questions on that? Good to go. So you got to vote on it? You were voting on all the budgets last week. You didn't vote on this one. Oh, you didn't? No. Uh, I make a motion that we approve the police department budget as amended at the total cost of $390,780. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 <coughs> General assistance, what was the change here? She had, just that you said yes to the she, she has presented us with 19 per hour. When she made her presentation, oh, okay. so she approved changed. it, but they only they hadn't gotten that message, so she corrected the 19. Okay, so motion to approve general. the general assistant budget. Second. All in favor? Aye. All right. Aye. Conservation. Just a cola change. <clears throat> Cola yep. change was it? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Motion to approve the conservation budget. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 And then that brings us to the warrants, right? Highway. Oh, highway, we're adding in. Okay, we're yeah, adding we in. Yeah, we didn't have that one. But I don't have the that. form. So I make a motion that we add in 2000 mm -hmm. uh, total four. $4,874 to the highway department budget. Line number, line item to be for the on site security and fire, security and fire. But that's. Not the whole picture because you're going to have to have a second phone line. Yes. And you're going to have to have an electrician come in and wire the panel for a uh, dedicated. And, uh, but I'm going to take that on my shock supplies. Okay. Okay. That I'm part, good with that. Yes. But the phone. Yes. Yeah. The phone and that budget. Or are you going to be able to squeeze that out if it's shop supplies? Who do you have your phone line now? Twenty-five dollars a line, I think. Thirty-six. Yeah, we can. The thirty-six now. I can do that. And and, and what is their uh, Annual uh, answering fee. Mm -hmm. I wish I had an answer for that, but I don't. What is it? <clears throat> Where is it for the Uh Twenty-five dollars. 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 Yeah. All right, I make a motion that we add five thousand dollars to the. Can I just Who is ask that for? I'm sorry. Ask Richard a question. Sure. Who do you have for your phone service? Is it Spectrum? Or consolidated? Because I know at the townhouse they wouldn't do it on a Spectrum line. I think you've got to make Yeah. Yeah. Further discussion. All in favor? Aye. 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 Kathy, what might you, where might you be putting that? You're going to make a new line? You're going to make a new line? Okay. Okay. Good. 5,000 in what new line? She's going to make the new line. Okay. All right. Do we want to go over the warrant on uh, I'm sorry. One more thing for Parks and Rec. You asked about the phone line down there. Um, they actually need that phone line to, for the computer. The so hotspot does not work there. Hotspot doesn't work no. there. No. Okay. And that's what I thought, but I right. had to ask to make sure. We've been after that question for a while. Yeah. Uh, <coughs> Parks and Recreation, you're going to talk about that for a second? We were talking about the MOA. Oh, yes. Uh, we get, uh, the girls did some research, and we got some information from uh, Osgood's down in Ossipee. Um, 
We've got the more down there. <coughs> I got some papers here in a minute. Put some figures together for uh, the spending on that more. <coughs> Street lights. But anyways, um, talking to Parker today, the moor is getting old. It's a regular. It's it's got some years on it. It's a John Deere. It's a uh, riding tractor type moor, not one of these quick steers or anything. Um, they spent uh, rec department spent four hundred and sixty nine dollars in the spring to get it ready for summer. Uh, later in the year, I think it was June or July, it had to have some deck work to it. Uh, that was uh, 300 and something. But also in that budget, it was a little confusing because uh, you had some uh, state taxes or something. Gasoline. Okay. And what about the um, gallon? Uh, porta the porta potties. Mm -hmm. Why are the prices so much different on the porta potties? There were different months with crazy prices. Uh, I think, if I recall right, one of those was like for 15 days in the month. It wasn't for the full month. If I remember right, it was, I, I looked at those, if I remember there, why is it not the same price for each month? And I think one of them was, um, it started on the 15th of the month and ran till the 31st, and then I think it's by day or something. They don't okay. do it just on a monthly basis, I think. Yeah. So, yeah. so we were talking six thousand dollars for more than I think you Drop. said <coughs> before. Parker mm -hmm. um, said probably it should be replaced. I mean, not that we spent tons of money on it, but um, I think for the four thousand you could get a new more. I don't think you'd get much for that. Is Hold it hydrostatic? On. Did he tell you whether it's hydrostatic or is it? He didn't good? mention. I forgot to ask what it was. I thought we left the four. I thought we left the four. We left the four. four. We we left left the four. four. Yeah, right. You left the four. Yeah, yeah. It was six at one time. Yeah, yeah we it changed actually, the four. It was actually right. seven to begin with. I think I dropped six. it to six. At but anyways, if, it, if they did want to replace it, um, I think before you could get something decent. Yeah. But I mean, it's not like it's wore out. It's and we haven't spent tons of money, tons of money on it. So <clears throat> figure those two big yeah. items. Did he think he'd get another year out of it? I didn't really ask him that direct question, so I wouldn't want to say. But you know, every time we do that, the only thing you do is you kick the can down the road. Yeah. yeah. So, I mean. Yeah. I've got, got a different question. Are we still leaving the 500 in as a donation to Sandwich? Oh, yeah. Dreaded. <laughs> <laughs> so, to me, I take it out, but that's me. <laughs> I thought you guys voted on that and said you wouldn't do, you weren't going to Well, they didn't that. decide. They didn't no. really decide? No. I don't think I was going to have a conversation. What, what happened last year with that? We gave it, it to them. We just left it in. Yeah. We left it in. That's something that can be addressed at the budget hearing when people hear how much the budget's going up. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's a big number. They may say we're going to cut a lot of things. More discussion on that. How's that, Matt? <laughs> well, uh, she's just trying to finalize the budget. That's mm -hmm. Yeah, I know. I, I mean, I'm... Mm -hmm. It's just me. I mean, I'm just one. I mean, I'm all for taking it out. I mean, I saw the document that said that we go there, but I know that they're putting out money for porta potties and... But they also get the monthly income when they ticket people over there. Yeah. And we don't have and, to. And I also to the deed. and I also understand that there is quite a few people that do use it. I know, but according to the deed, we don't have to pay that. I know, I know. Can I go back to Kathy for just a second? On highway, the latest one you sent us, you do have New Lakeside monitoring under four three one two point two zero dash six four zero highway okay. building maintenance rental. Looking is that know. where we're going to put it? <laughs> <laughs> I just was looking at it. It would make more sense. Okay, so I can put it in there. I found these papers finally on this, but it was, um, the question I had was treasurer, state of New Hampshire DOT, various charges, like $4.41, and then you get gasoline. Yes, yeah, gasoline that he fills yeah, up out there. He picks up over there for the moment. What's, what's, what's urban energy? Oh, that's to swap out the tank. Right. Yeah. Okay. And then um, Collins Sports, 
usually buys trophies and things okay. like that, or right. shirts, whatever. Seventeen dollars. Yeah. That might have been put in the wrong account. That says ice packs. Well, yeah. he probably used that for his own um, medical kit. Okay. But anyways, the total repairs on that tractor last year was five ninety three seventy one. Oh, the other thing too, three hundred and seventy nine dollars. Was that a new walk behind mower that he bought? That's what it says. Mm. Walk the mower, walk behind. Okay. No country okay, tractor. I need to push more. Mm -hmm. All right. So I guess it's up to you people. As far as well, if you want to put in the budget for four thousand dollars to get a we we have that we have that. Yeah, I know that but I'm saying if you want to spend the money well, put in the budget you're going to spend right, the money you know so. me I don't want to spend the money <laughs> I know but I guess what I'm saying is you're going to buy him a tractor aren't you That's, that if you put in the budget the time the budget. It stays okay in. okay good. All right, we're going over the warrants. Um, yeah. First one is the. Hang on, hang on, hang on. Let me get it up here. So I would probably start on a. Can we? You guys, you guys got warrants that we want to talk about for the yep. grants, right? Yep. Yeah. So let's go fast forward for these guys so that they can go. So I would Thank say you. start on <laughs> Article Number Nine. Well, eight, but the police cruiser was number eight. Okay. Which I think you guys already talked about. Yep. Article number nine is um, the forest fire utility vehicle. I have a total price of 208381 with 20000 being raised by taxes. And the rest is a, is a grant. <coughs> for and if the grant isn't approved, these funds won't be. Correct. Yeah. Right. And yep. if we don't get the grant, we don't buy the car. Correct. Okay. So do we get a vote on these? Well, we will, but... <laughs> yeah, it actually... At the hearing. At the hearing. Okay, so any questions on this? We just want to make sure we got the, all the wording uh, right. That looks good to you? Yes. This hasn't gone to the lawyer or the wow. RA yet. And then I, the other one was the, the other gear one was washer. The gear washer, dryer. Um, Zach said he was going to have... Better figures for us I tonight. believe we went with twenty-four thousand. We do have updated well, figures. Well, what line is that? So I have to, <laughs> 10. Ten. Originally, article ten. Article ten. We originally said twenty-eight thousand. We can drop that to twenty-four. We've okay. got new numbers, and really, it doesn't matter. All we want is two thousand dollars. Right. I guess it does matter because we have to raise. You have to raise. It does. Correct. So twenty-four is fine. Okay. Okay. So you reduce. So that. the total amount is twenty-four, and then it will be twenty-one. Twenty-one. Uh, twenty-two. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. Quick question. Um, Quick answer. Because uh, Jimmy didn't really know exactly how, because the washer dryer is for the suit so that the people don't take them home to wash them. And um, a question was brought up last week. Uh, does it use like regular detergent or does it have like a special detergent? Or it, It's special, but tied. <laughs> it's... <laughs> Because the pH level in it, 4.5 and time meets that criteria. Oh, okay. Um, the biggest problem, we have a regular wash machine, and it's really hard on the gear because it spins too fast, whatever. It's a specialized cleaning uh, machine, and then the extractor just gently uses cool, fairly warm air. It's not like a regular dryer. Um, and it's the biggest thing, take carcinogens out. They learn in firefighters dying of cancer. If you put it in your vehicle, when the vehicle gets hot, it off gases. So uh, the biggest thing with this grant is going to allow us to wash three sets of fire gear at once. Uh, the dryer, what we're going for, is going to allow us to dry up to six sets at once, which is going to, in turn, reduce the downtime of firefighters not being able to have their gear for the next call. It is also uh, biohazard capable of washing if we end up getting exposed to people's blood or stuff like that. We don't have to bring it home. We can throw it in the station, wash it, and that way it stays in the station, doesn't leave into people's vehicles or come into our house. Um, like, what's the standard time of, like, you put the suit in the washer and then you take it out of the dryer, how long would that take? Like, uh, it depends on the machine. Um, the one we have in Ashland, I work in Ashland, takes about 40 to 45 minutes. All depends on the model. Oh, okay. 
wash and dry? The wash, because it, it has to do, go through a certain amount of cycles and spin the and stuff like that. Uh, All together, be two hours maybe. Oh, okay. Thank you. Okay, so. I just have a quick question. Only because you're getting it. Is your electric line item <coughs> on the budget going to be enough to cover that? I'm assuming it's right. electric. Electric dryer. Yep. So I would assume if you're going to be able to wash more than you're washing now, that you might That's be getting fewer electric. That's a good point. I did not think of that, but I think bill. we got enough in the budget to cover it for okay. this year, and we'll see where it ends up. Okay. Just double check. Okay, so let's double check. Okay, so you say it's a total of twenty-four. Yeah. We're still going to be raising two thousand. So the grand total. Twenty-four. 24. So 22. Yeah. 2000 is going to come from us if we're successful. <coughs> yeah. yep. so, so, so it says here to be raised taxation and remaining 26000 from a grant. So, so that's going to be the remaining 22. 22. 22. 22. So it's 24 to 22. Yeah. We good? Yep. Good. What other? Did you the have any other article, Yep. The next article is for the uh, rescue vehicle. Yep. So the sum of 225000 Um. One hundred seventy-two thousand two hundred eighty-two to be raised by taxes. Fifty-two thousand seven hundred eighteen to come from um, the rescue truck capital reserve. Yes. And um, the chief, or I don't even know who asked me. I think Zach. They asked about the revolving fund for the ambulance service. I put it, that's cer certainly up to the board whether they want to put this on or not. That's I put it on so we would never talk about it. Correct. Right? Yes. Okay. Yes, that works. So the rescue vehicle for us. Yeah, yeah, we did that. Yeah, sorry. Am I confused, or did you not just say tonight you could probably go another year or two without the rescue vehicle being removed? You're not yep. confused at all. The yep. so, should we re so should we remove this article? So I guess I'm asking you guys. That's up to you folks. The vehicle's retained. It's running good. It's got some surface rust, a little bit of rust on the frame. Right now, there's not any major issues with it. Like the chief said earlier, if we kick that can down the road and then end up so talk to the CIP next I year. Exactly. Is it a dump truck? Is it a... I want to talk to the is CIP. Is this the year that so, it So maybe you might appropriate the money and put it into the capital <coughs> reserve fund, but not spend it. Yeah. Could we do that? That's yeah. what I was thinking. So move. We need to have it there a line You've got money there to, to work on. I, you make that happen, Mr. Fireman. You make me well, very happy. Well, it's going to go in the count. Or, or maybe it's, not all of it. And then maybe not all of it, but some of it. You know, I mean, we but made, I think we should have that discussion with the CIP because yeah. I know when I was on the CIP, oh, yeah, no, it's hard. They, it was right. very difficult, it's, and right. they yeah. make a five-year plan, and then when you keep doing that, yeah. right. you mess them up. And but, another part of that is they did have that 2012 Tahoe to be replaced 2020, but it's got around 65000 It's in very good shape. I anticipate another two, three years out of that. I mean, they moved this back, because this was out beyond 2025, because it was the ambulance <coughs> service. It was in with the ambulance it service, changed. and we brought it back <coughs> up, because it couldn't have gone out to, two, you know, beyond 225. We just couldn't. That didn't even make sense. Right. So, I agree. If we initiated this into a capital reserve, I would say definitely, but not all of it. Well, I mean, that's. I mean, we got to we got to start doing some balancing here. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but I would say put like. Right. We all a pay majority taxes. into capital reserve, and then. But let's discuss that with the CIP at the budget here. How's that? That would be good, I guess. David's got. David, David's got a piece of paper there. That he really wants to say something. Well, I've got the CIP report. Right. Oh. Mm -hmm. And everyone that, that shows spending for 2020 at 1.6 million. Right. In 2021 is 1.1 million. Yeah. So, so 2020 is your high your high point in the in, in that's what I'm the curve. The high point is 2020. Yeah. So we can lower that down. Anything from, that you're moving out. But from the CIP meetings, we knew it was the high point. But everything in 2021 got pushed out again, farther down the line to try and even it out. So we're always pushing something down the line, whether it's a vehicle, whether it's because, like, Rich's truck got pushed out last year, but it got put back in this year. So I guess I'm of the feeling well, either way to do it, either put some money in a capital reserve so we don't have to raise it all in one year, and should this have some major issues, they might have some money to repair it. Or, I had suggested 100000 That's what I was going to say, Matt. Mm -hmm. That capital reserve, 
non-lapsin or however it's worded. For well, it's already, it's just going to go in the capital reserve. You don't need anything else. It's, there's already a reserve set up. I'm You're just going to add to it. That's awesome. Oh, there's two of the firewalls, three of the firewalls here. Uh -huh. yeah. can, can I go at yeah. one yeah. point in the past when we had capital reserves, we had changed the wording so that, say, this, say we do just that, and I'm totally good with that, if the thing does catastrophically fail, we can pull it out. Yeah, to put, even right. if you don't have enough to purchase the whole thing, we'd have enough to start the to ball probably ball. get one. Mm -hmm. get them rolling, right? mm -hmm. but so just to make sure that the wording is such that we have that flexibility. Like the other day, how many runs that truck actually made over the course of the year? Well, I think what you were talking about. I said we transport about seven, seven times a year. Yeah. But in theory, it goes on. Well, we had 39 EMS calls last month, so it went out 39 times. Okay. It's just we don't transport to one of the hospitals that often unless we have. Okay. Them. That was just a transport. This is yes, the seven. Yeah. It, okay. That's a guess without yeah, looking roughly. over the year. Do you know? Do you know who's set up to expend that from that capital reserve? I, I it, don't. The fire, fire trucks were always the board of fire wards. The rescue was the so board of selectmen, but now it's under the fire wards. So, so because I don't if, know. It needs to, if we're putting it, it in, it needs done. to stay. Who can expend it? Who can expend it? I don't know who that is right now. Yeah. And if, if well, it's all one department. It. So if you do the fire wards, in my opinion, that's fine because fire wards, we're not going to do anything without your consensus, like we have in the past. For fire trucks, it's going to be a group. I'll find out what's wrong. I suspect, yeah. right? I think it's a fire, probably the fire <clears throat> No, I suspect that the rescue is the selectman because it just changed right, the firewoods in the last year. Ago. So, and that That's capital right. reserve is fairly yeah. old. Oh, okay. I right. understand. So, <coughs> do you want to just leave it like that? If they will have to change it in, in the new warrant article. Not a big deal. I mean, you're not going to have enough money. Yeah, you'll have to do a new warrant article. We're all going to be in agreement, so whatever makes sense. We'll if have it's to the figure it out. Okay, I'll the find boards. it. Okay, so we agreed that we're going to cut this article and put 100000 into the capital reserve to bring it up to 152000 mm -hmm. Is that what we're doing? Mm -hmm. Awesome. Yep. All right. You happy with that? Outstanding. Yep. Okay. We can get behind. We all pay taxes. So the other thing was the Tahoe. We took that off the table. Um, we have a Warren article. Two years ago, we started billing through Comstar when we have to transport and when we do transport. It was the intent. The whole reason we came about that is we used to be able to go to the hospital and we use a bunch of widgets and we get new widgets from the hospital. No longer can we go in and say we use an IV and blah, blah, blah. So we're billing when we transport. We hash that all out. But we don't have access to that money. It goes into the general fund. So there's a warrant article that we'll have access because the whole intent of it was to help offset cost of medical supplies. But if it goes into the general fund, when you need medical supplies, you buy them. We pay it out of the general fund. No, you pay it out of my budget. Well, you know what I mean? But so. I don't, I'm not recouping, it's still coming out of my yeah. budget. Well, when we met back in June, that we agreed that it would be better, a lot more transparent than ever if the money stayed within that article, that line item, I'm rather right. than disappearing into the general fund and then making it look like... I agree. So we were, somebody said at the time, well, that has to be... And a warrant article at town meeting to yeah. make that change. So to that was set, the intent. To set yes. up an offset revenue, just like the... Right. Well, this yeah. would be a revolving... Uh, this revolving is for a revolving fund. fund. So all that's going in and out of here is the ambulance money that you collect and and expenses for the... Um, I think I... Collecting fees. Yeah, the collecting fees and then to expend for... Um, fire department expenditures. We probably should. We probably should make that a little bit more specific. Um, yeah. I mean, if you're trying to reimburse the expenditure of your supplies, right? Which widgets, whatever you want to call them. We have a line item well, zero one forty two twenty ten seven forty. That that's where it's all coming out of. So if you go right. in that equipment at the end. So I just put in here: these funds may be expended only try. for ambulance service purposes. 
but and well, service for but, supplies. But the thing is, this also says they can accumulate from year to year, right. which I understand. You know, you might do something uh, on the the twelfth of the yeah. last month, and then it goes into the next year. But why would there be an accumulation? Um, you know, I mean, is the ambulance billing that we pay for, we pay for somebody to put out the bills and they hopefully get money in, and I don't know how that's balanced out, whether that's been a profit or a non-profit. I think we sent that to... Uh, yeah, well, this week. Yeah, a couple weeks ago. A couple weeks ago? Okay. Okay. I didn't, I mean, I didn't see it, that. It, it's see. showing about $2,000. About $2,000 $2, $2, $2, $2, in it's revenue. It's like $3,000 per month. Profit. $2,000 per month? They're, they're billing their revenue brought ninety nine, huh? Four thousand ninety nine per year for this year. Per the year for this year, four thousand. Yeah, ninety nine. And that's with the bill billing. Taking and so, what does the billing cost? Three grand. Three grand. So you're down to one thousand ninety nine dollars. No, 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 no. She subtracted that all out. Right. Oh, okay, okay. It's self sustaining and we're taking a little money. Right. right. Um, and you Sweet. A, I agree, Chief. If you want to move on. You have a bill from me there tonight, um, you'll find it interesting. For an example, Easy I.O. anyways, all they are is needles. They're a little mm -hmm. piece of crap. $1,200 for a box of five. Jeez. I didn't know that. I didn't anticipate that. That's a big hit. So I want that money back that I can recoup that. But you're right. Somehow you. that revolving Thank account you. has to say for replacement of... The only other Warren article I may or may not have is the $8,000 for... That's in the grants. It's in the grants. It's in the grants. It's not a Warren article. Okay. Done. Perfect. Well, it's listed separately in the grant line. Your work is done here. I think that's it, right? Yes. You keep me out of trouble, so... I think so. There was right. five. You had five. Yes. Yeah. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you for the money come back at the end of the year? Once the it's grant complete. Money, once it's complete. Which grant? <coughs> so no, any grant. Not any yours. Any grant. It depends on when the grants are. Yeah, and it depends on where you get it from. They where they say, okay, you have this until it comes in, and then and they'll award it. Darling, you're not going to get to it tonight, but you know my memory. Um, June Garner has sent a bunch of tentative dates. I can do anything else. I was going to get into it tonight okay. with, during my administrative report. Anyone can go on. Maximum participation is important to meet our 50% matching grant solved, just people showing up. Yeah. And she had some so I have four dates. I have four dates for that that will be Thank you everyone you for your time. Thank Appreciate you. it. <coughs> What's Article 5? Article 5. I have a question under town administration because there it says 206653. Yeah. And the French sheet that she sent out. I might not have. I might not have fixed all these numbers. Two o two. Yeah. I, I don't think I fixed all these numbers yet. Two o two six five three is yeah. what. I'll take a look. That's at that. the only one of the numbers that I went through that I can make difference. And then. Nope. So. Um, go back to. Well, five. So yep. we're on five. I put the server in there. Yep. Um, the grants are in there. Then we've got public safety. Yep. So the police department, the flooring is in here. The three months of the ambulance contract. That's where I was confused. I know you get the three months there. And the rest. And again, I was looking at Kathy's cover sheet, so okay. maybe that can help. But under ambulance on the cover sheet, the expenditure detail sheet, which is very small, so give me a moment I have to try and find it. It says Ambulance Care Plus, and her total in there is 308587, which I know is the first portion of the ambulance contract plus the Care Plus, but on this cover sheet, they're not broken out. We'll look at that. But I think so if anybody looks at the cover sheet, they're good. But it's broken out in the warrant. That it is broken yes. out in the warrant. Yes. And it's broken out on the 
on the individual sheet, but this cover sheet, it wasn't broken out. Okay. We'll look at that. <coughs> Uh, then we've got the rescue department, or fire, yeah, fire rescue department, the fire station maintenance for 18000 the ambulance billing, which is the three, <coughs> that we recoup okay. from yeah. Comstar, or for Comstar. Um, forest fires, emergency management, animal control. <coughs> article 7 is the contract, uh, the, the article for the ambulance contract, which was written by town council. Article 8 was the police cruiser at 35000 We went all the, over all the other ones for the fire. Mm -hmm. Then we come to Article 13, which is a Central Fire Police Station for 150000 for did we, architectural did we drawings. Did we that, or are we leaving it as a municipal building? I don't know. Uh, Call whatever you want. Well, you well that's why I was asking, because the like, well, well, you said municipal, municipal building, building. No, because... because you know, putting in the municipal vote, like we're not going to be in there. So it's really just going to be yeah, fire. I, mean, I think, like, you know, with, I just, the, with the core idea. being built so that it could expand. That's fine. That I just said it. the committee that's working on this is the municipal right. building right. committee. So I was just sort of saying, that's a good question. That's good. Oh. Um, can I just ask something? Why 150000 for the architectural? Design when uh, North Conway Fire Rescue has passed this past year seventy-five thousand for an architectural design of their station. Why I, is it double? I called Milton, who built the station, as you know, not too long ago. Yeah. And that's what they had put in for their architectural design. You know, I mean, you can probably look at what Conway did, and they may have done half of it and got par partial drawings but not enough to go ahead and get a bid price until they went for the rest of it and got their bond and everything else together. Um, that's part of the money from Milton. Actually, I think it was 75% of the architectural cost, and then they uh, put the other 25% in when they went to do their bond so they could get the whole, whole package. Um, you know, and I took... The figure and went okay. Well, that's okay. what what it costs. I mean, um, that's what it's going to cost sooner or later just to do the job. I mean, it seems stuck. crazy. It, it, I mean, it, it blew me away. I was I was you know thinking you know okay seventy five thousand would cover the whole thing and. Not <coughs> and it doesn't get if it doesn't get approved, then it stops. But I mean, we're at a point you can't do any more until we have something. Something from the voters. Yeah. Public works, you need to raise that, right? Yeah, by 5,000. Yeah, that needs to be up by 5. Yeah. Article 15. We haven't got any bids in yet, right? No, I think the um, beginning of February, maybe? Yeah, the 13th said, or 14th yeah. or something. So more to follow. Yeah. But that's the number from um, trustees. Yep. It's in the capital reserve now. Yep. Mm -hmm. And that will be adequate to go to town town meeting on the floor. They can say, yeah, it's going to be less or it's going to be more. Right. You know, and that right. be a good number. Right. Health and welfare, I stayed the same, right? We added in her. Yes, we added in her yep. increase. And we decreased the health officer line. So. Good. Culture and recreation, we did the 4000 for the mower. That's good. Yep. That's good. Conservation Commission had no changes, right? Mm -hmm. The library is that? Other than the COLA. Yeah. The library I think is that? This is the correct number. Yeah, yeah. Uh, the, number is the library is the correct number. Correct. It is the correct number. 270,269. Yeah. They want to raise. They have to raise. Yep. Um, did you want to do the conservation <coughs> again? The what? For this, the contingency I for hundred fifty thousand. Oh, I think I think we have to. okay. I, think I mean, I just put it on there because it was there last no, year. No, I think we need to talk I about think it. we have to since it's not a rollover every year. I think right. we've got to. Does it need to be yes. that much? We've never I, seen. Well, if the fire truck. I mean, if the rescue truck goes belly up and we've only put a hundred thousand I mean, in and we only, need two hundred thousand, we better have some money. The only thought on that is we do have a pretty good fund balance, <laughs> so you could get permission from DRA to use fund balance. I know that's a little bit more. Well, no. If, if there was, a, if, if there the was generator, if the generator goes down again, it's. I mean, we spent 
you know, we spent, spent 20 of it. Yeah, we yeah. spent 20 of it last yeah. year, so. That's fine. And, I mean, and it's still coming is, out of the fund balance. Correct. Also, yeah. Also, every year we're putting, you know, last year, what was it, $700,000 we put yeah. to offset taxes, right. so it's not like we're hanging on to oh, that money and putting it in their shoebox. He this said year last year. This oh. year was only three hundred thousand. Yeah. So yeah. within, seven, right. within yeah, two I mean, years, right. we've put in seven hundred a million dollars. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. taxes. Yeah. Okay. So it's not it's coming from the taxes. It's coming from the it's coming from fund balance. Yeah. It so is. it shouldn't even be a discussion. Right. Okay. So why are you discussing just, it? Because I just want to make sure. Okay. <laughs> Don't be yelling at me. Twenty-one. Seven thousand dollars for the fencing fence. of the cemetery. We already discussed that. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, what do you do? Here we come. Here Whoa. we come. Give me some numbers. All right. For the sewer system, after our meeting on uh, last week, the total amount that will be raised will be $21,197.55. Can we just have $198? If you so well, yes. yeah, you can. I mean, yes, that's what our budget's going to be. If you want to round it off, I know you're going to twenty one one nine eight. How about twenty one two hundred? No, no, because we've got some areas that we're going to be dropping. Okay, so we'll do twenty one one nine eight. Out of that, sixteen thousand one hundred ninety seven dollar ninety eight dollars will be operating six thousand. One sixteen thousand one hundred and ninety eight will be operating. Okay. Five thousand will be capital reserve. Okay. None of which is to be raised by taxes, it's to be raised by user fees. Okay. Yeah. And you're just gonna send me the article um number twenty three. That all, wording has changed. All twenty three has to say is that um that the initial contribution of 32, I know you don't like these numbers, they're not mine, 32 whatever was in the town report last well, year. Well, just send, yeah, okay. Comes from the enterprise fund balance as per Article 4 of 219. Yeah, you can, you can send it to me. You are, said you are written. <coughs> Thank you. And so, what about this 5,000? That'll just go into that. Via the first article. The problem yeah. we had is we had no capital reserve right. established, yeah. even though last that. year's okay. Warren article said put 3232 32 in the capital reserve. Yeah. We went to do that and found out we don't have one. So we have to establish the capital reserve first, and then each year we can put more into the capital reserve. The, um, all the rest of the articles, Dan, are the um, yeah. there is outside agencies. Yeah. Um, and and Barely, but yes, we didn't have the say North was it Northern Human Services we didn't have? And I can't find they, that. They, did they put did it call, in finally? Okay. They did call and they are gonna be putting in a petition. So it doesn't, it doesn't pay 50. to find out if they're in existence or not. Twenty seven thousand no twenty two yeah, seven hundred and fifty. Oh, uh, mental health? Yeah. Yes. Yes. Um no, that's not mental health. Oh, no. Oh, actually, you know what? I don't think it got <coughs> it. She just you didn't have to put it in. She just called me. It's not on here. I had already sent you this. Right. It's on our worksheet. It's on our worksheet, though. Last year it was 2,750. Okay, maybe it is. So now it's 2,750. No, I think it's 3,750. I was fine. 3,000. Quick question about the uh, going to back just for a minute. About 150,000 um, for design. We do not, at this time, have a piece of land <coughs> for a building, right? Now, I realize you get a piece of land, you do test pits and everything else, but let's just say that that uh, piece of land contained, you know, let's just say latch and drilling, you had to do a bunch of stuff. That price has nothing to do with any of that. That's just the design of the building. Right. That's <coughs> the cost. And of course, then you look at it and go. Right. Yeah. Plastic, drill and blast is gonna plastic gives us an idea what size piece of land we need to look right. for. Right. Right. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> sounds crazy. Oh. Uh, well, three point six million to build it sounds crazy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Alrighty, well that was painless. Any other questions from the uh, budget committee? Uh, do you want a quick report on street lights? Yeah. Yes. Uh, <laughs> this is a mess. Oh, yeah. 
Yeah. Don't really, they don't really know what we have. I better should have volunteered for this project. <laughs> um, let's go over to Little Las Vegas in uh, Chicago Village. Uh, all those lights over there, uh, they have three different meters that were installed to meter different groups of the lights, okay, uh, for all the lights that are there. And we're paying uh, $130.76 a month for those lights over there in Route 16. Um, there are a number of other lights in town that are also needed. It comes into the town of Tamworth for billing, uh, and they also have meters on them. Um, and there's, uh, let's see, 13 other sites. Um, Townhouse, uh, P&R, Durrell Road, Fire Department, Tamworth Police, uh, Great Hill Road, something. But anyways, um, so we're getting billed for those lights on Route 16. Uh, it's kind of separate because they are needed as far as the kilowatt usage each month. Um, and then between Eversource and I think Willie did some work. Did you do some work a number of years ago yeah. on the street lighting? Yeah. Okay. Tried to figure it out. Yeah. Well, <laughs> according to this report from Eversource, um, <coughs> We are being billed for 42 other lights, um, Route 25, Maple Road, Cleveland Hill, Route 16, uh, there's 42 and they're all various sizes. There's some out there that are, uh, should have been uh, junked 50 years ago, they've been up so long. So we're getting a bill, we're get, you're getting your bill for the 130 over there, and then you're getting your regular bill here that varies from, uh, yeah, let's see, maybe Darlene can help me. I guess this one was uh, yeah. payment due January 27th. Eight or nine hundred dollars a month. This was a thousand ten. Yeah. Okay. Okay, that's another one there. Yeah, nine seventy-eight. Um, so I have a meeting tomorrow morning at nine thirty down at. PSNH with um, the head man for this, so we'll see what we can find out and get started on something. Um, I mean, I don't know how much they're going to charge to do it, how much the package is. I don't know what type of lights they're going to be, but at least, you know, and, and the other thing is if we need bigger lights like in the village, they can still figure that in. You don't have to, you know, they're going to change every street light. That's what they'll do, but certain areas you can have a different size ball or size of the light and hopefully we can come up with a decent package as far as pricing uh, to the town and this is something that you know should have been up, done a long time ago because it's just uh, well, we shut a bunch of them off a number of years ago right. I think I was in <clears throat> nine maybe or oh, six we had a public hearing and right. tried to go through and I've had a lot of people say oh, you should have shut more off but, yeah um, well, and then the thing of, uh, you know, I know there's been a lot of concern about the things aren't working and you can't get them fixed and uh, can't get them to come out and fix them. Um, things have changed since 11 years ago. But, um, yeah, it is different. But, um, is this something that we're looking at in this budget or can it be done that quickly? Well, I, think what, it's I was hoping, be... what I was hoping to do is, uh, after talking to Randy tomorrow, is what we might come up with some kind of an idea of what it might cost. We can't do anything with those lights over on 16. Those are going to have to stay for that price. But the rest of the lighting from Route 25 and everything, um, um, that I hope to get a price so we can I, see, but I think we'll have to, you know, I think we'll have to go with what the proposal is in here for what was it, 13,000 street light, 11,000? It was 12. It was 11, 4. So, um, it, will he be talking about 
potential grants and such that we can Well, that's what I got to check for. in okay. with. Yeah, see what see what's out there. So I, I, we I, can do. They do have stuff. But if we find out we need more to get it through to start it next year, mm -hmm. we can change it at the town meeting. meeting. Yeah. Right? If we find out we can get it cheaper, well, we can lower it. Well, I think we need a price and get what size price we want and everything. Um, you know, they'll do it, um, you know, before spring comes, I'm sure. But I don't know as far as the budget or present it to the town. I mean, part of it is also, I mean, there's, you have to look at the quality of the light yeah. and, oh, you know, all of that in there. And I mean, you know, we had one light over in Chicago that was above one of the lights that was there. Yeah. It was one of the old, oldest ones, you know, oh, those yeah. little ring, the old ring ones. Incandescent. Yeah. And, and I mean, so we'd actually be saving money by putting these all to LED because yeah. we wouldn't be using the same amount of electricity. Oh, yeah. I mean, you'd be pretty small on the electric. One thing maybe you people know, or uh, I'd have to dig into, maybe Randy knows uh, for tomorrow, but over there on the intersection of the old Route 25 uh, and, six, and, uh, and 25 by the sawmill, there's two street lights there. Now, that's a state highway. <laughs> yeah, the state put them up and they said send the bill to the town of Tamworth. All right. yeah. I okay. argued about that. A lot. All right. We could do half of them. Right. I think you only need one there. Well, I don't know if either one of them are actually working now. A couple times I've been by, I don't think I've one seen much light. South Side has been working for quite a while. I, Is that on your list? I, yeah, I keep reporting it. Well, when the old chief was around, not this chief, chief before, Emory, um, he would always put a, he would always put a uh, ribbon around it, and he'd see us and he'd say, you know, the ribbon on that one, can you fix it? We had bulbs on the truck, so we'd fix them and tear the ribbon off and keep it up to date, but uh, it's not times have changed. Yeah, times have changed. Yeah. It's a special truck. Yeah. So yeah. more to follow. Yeah. More to follow. Okay. Thank you, sir. Yeah. I'll be keep up the good work. Yeah, thank you. All right. Moving along here. Signature file. Make a motion to approve the non-public... Selectman's meeting for Thursday, January 9th. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 That wasn't me. But it was a regular meeting, not a non public, was it? Yeah, these are regular minutes, not non public. It's non-public for RSA 9183. No, no, the minutes aren't for non-public minutes. We had a non-public. Oh, we had. Okay, the minutes. I'm sorry. <laughs> you weren't here, huh? So it's the minutes of January 9th. Yeah. Okay. And you weren't out. You were not here. Oh, we're not here. You were not. Yeah, Aaron was not here. All right. Motion to approve the original Warren yield tax levy in the amount of $752.40. This is going to be map and lot number 208-040-000. Motion to approve. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Approve a application for current use. Uh, map number 414, lot number 055. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 to approve a summary of forest stewardship plan for current use assessment on uh, map number 414 lots 57 and 58. Motion to approve. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Aye.
right. Motion to approve a vacancy for the Conservation Commissioner, Charles Townsend, to be a representative. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion to approve Lucy Gatchell as an alternate to the Carroll County to the Conservation Commissioner. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 And uh, third, motion to approve Kit Morgan as a representative for the Conservation Commission. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Make a motion to appoint Laura Pike as a economic development commissioner to serve as one of the seven members. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 And this is a permit for the sale of fireworks. For Route 16 at tax map number 210, lot 012-001. This is actually like a renewal. All in favor? Oh, motion to approve. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion to approve non-public non meeting on January 14, 2020. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 To approve a non-public session meeting on January 9th, 2020. Second. All in favor? Aye. Last but not least, motion to approve a non-public session for January 9th, 2020. Second. All in favor? Aye. This is you. Selections update, I guess I'll stop because... You got the manifest. Oh, I'm sorry. You got the manifest. How could I do that? Because I don't want to spend this big money. Oui. 2020 manifest signature form. For the dates of January 24th. In the amount of accounts payable, $287,000, 330 $287,332.10. Motion to approve. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 This is going to be for the 2019th expenditure, dated January 24th, for accounts payable in the amount of $38,831.22. Anybody interested in year yes. to date? I just think everybody ought to hear that. You ready? You all sitting down? Ten million two hundred and seventeen thousand one hundred and eighty four dollars and forty five cents. Would you like me to repeat that? No, we don't want to hear it again. <laughs> you gonna throw up? <laughs> That's bad Motion to approve. Motion to approve. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 I could do a replay. No. <laughs> All right, this is the manifest signature form for accounts payable dated uh, January 30th. Payroll. 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 Oh, I mean, I'm sorry, payroll. Accounts. <coughs> There's accounts payable, not payroll. Mm -hmm. Can you?
Can I pencil it over? Yes. Why don't you use ink? Yeah. Ink. So I will pencil over from accounts payable to payroll in the amount of $34,231.79. And year to date, $734,935.63. No. It's a lot better than the 10 No, million. she's shaking her head no. Because I'll have to fix it and put it in the right column. So you got the wrong year to date. Don't do the year to date tonight. <laughs> oh, don't do the year to date. It's in the wrong column. It's because it was in the accounts payable. Because it's more than that, isn't it? No, no, no. It's okay. less than that. Because <laughs> we've only had two payables, and they're about 33. So okay. Oh, that's right. We only had... That's right. They're, they're no wonder it's so small. <laughs> okay, so motion to approve the $34,231.79. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Now I can go into <clears throat> Selectman's update. I'll go while you guys are so and I have nothing because the only thing I had was an economic development and Pat already put those in and all of that. Becky. We have a Carroll County Broadband Committee meeting coming up February 13th at 10 a.m. <coughs> at the Economic Development huh? Council Council for North Conway. Their host and the North Conway or the Conway Selectmen are hosting it. It's open to the public, so anybody's welcome to attend. Where is that at? <laughs> Uh, in North Carolina. Carolina. It's in the Washington Valley Economic Council, which is where they have the, um, the, this, the school. Yeah. Which, I don't remember the drive. Name. I think it's tech yeah, 67 technology, 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 technology drive. Technology drive, yeah. Like that, I think. Right past where the key place is. Yeah, yeah. Shop used to be. Uh, as you know, the New Hampshire Health Network sent out the big notice on the new form of virus that is hitting an out-of-country country and one diagnosis case in the state, in the United States, and now they're screening. Uh, same thing. Make sure if you've been traveling, you notify your providers. If you get around somebody who's been traveling, they're coughing, it's flu-like symptoms. Be extra careful. Plenty of hand washing. Uh, anything like that. That's been the latest and greatest on that. Um, and as far as the... Sewer Commission, I want to thank Robbie Farnham. We now have gotten the generator building locked up and everything, and we really didn't raise the budget that much. It was 17-something last year, and we raised it to 21, and five of that's going into capital reserve because there's no more block grants. So we had to replace a pump again this year. That makes two pumps to the tune of $7,000 this year alone in pumps for the septic system. And the lawyer is still working on the one easement, so I'm not sure our $800 worth of legal fees is going to be enough because we spent $10,000 in legal fees last year getting the system straightened out. So there will be a report in town. Report. Who do we have for uh, hired for the septic pump replacements and things like that? Uh, the company that we had used, they have used right along. We are looking at different companies and mm -hmm. stuff to see if we can get a better price. But what happened is they replaced, the TVA replaced the pump in February of two, night, of two, March of 2019. March of 2019. Another one had to be replaced. They replaced three in 18 months. How Plus, many pumps are there total? Mm -hmm. Have there any warranties or anything on these pumps? And they replaced the wiring issue, so we're looking to see what can be done because there's something that evidently isn't That's jiving. Right Either the pumps aren't big enough to handle what's going on, or the wiring still is something, or whatever. So there are we are looking at we use one company now. We're looking at another company. And there was $1,000 put in the budget because the generator has not operated since, two, the backup generator hasn't operated since 2009. And uh, the oil tank, the propane tanks need to be re-upped and fixed and stuff, so we're working at that as well. So the maintenance line, we made it quite hefty at $7,000 because we, it's, it's almost $3,800 a pump. 
by the time they pump it, install it, get it working, and inspect it. I want to make sure that that stuff goes where it's supposed to go. The answer to your, your, your question, Howdy, uh, is Lamprey and Lamprey that's changing. Yep, that's good. They're good people. They've done work at Chicago Meadows replacing pumps and wiring. And the other thing we're looking at is um, putting in a wireless alarm system so that somebody from the library doesn't have to worry about if the red light goes off or something so that we can have remote alarm notification. It, there's no line down there like telephone line or anything like that and that cost would be prohibited to the users because you got to remember we're charging 26 people. Yeah. So we can get a wireless type alarm that they were looking at that would be able to sound off at our phone so somebody could go down. You got the email from Carl Weber? Forwarded. Yeah, I'm still confused about that because when I sent the other stuff in to the other Primex person, he said he was sending it to underwriters. Because, again, this whole business about the town liability covering the sewer, and the sewer was passed with no cost to the town. So I don't know how we're going to address that. That's been an ongoing issue for a year. A year. And um, the other question that came up is we have an alarm system that's connected to a private entity's structure, and if that wiring goes in that structure and sets that building on fire, who covers that building? Because... <laughs> We don't have any agreements concerning having the alarm there. So we're looking at that, too. Okay. I got nothing for this week. I haven't got nothing. Have <laughs> you picked up the whole thing? Can. Can. No, yeah. <laughs> I don't think so. I, I don't remember all that I've done this week. I've been out of town a little bit, but I do have an announcement to make, uh, a sad announcement that Ralph Weymouth at 103 passed away oh. and uh, he was our post cane holder and uh, we were about to actually take it away because he moved to Maine. Um, but a sad, sad day for somebody 103. Um, he was so missed. proud when he was in here. What? He was just in here two weeks ago. He was like really proud. Very peacefully. Just, Good. You know, he, he, way to do it. I guess if we're going to go, that would be the way to go. Yeah. That's right. You know, sad, sad to see him go. Yeah. Um, so anyway, that, that's uh, the announcement. And I've just been playing with a lot of paper lately. So, yeah. The numbers. No. <laughs> I went to the library trustee meeting. Um, as always, the library is doing great. I had the last meeting, we I picked up all the quill items that were downstairs and delivered them and they were ecstatic and very happy to have them for this island auction in March. So it was good. Darlene. Um, we received a donation from Remick Country Doctor Museum, which I believe there was a letter in your box in the bin. Um, so they've agreed to pay five thousand dollar. They're calling it a pilot. They don't actually have a formal pilot with us. I don't know if the board wants them to have a formal pilot, but every year they're saying, well, every year when they do their budget, they will let us know how much they're going to donate. <coughs> so, okay, so um, they don't want something in a five-year pilot. I didn't ask them, um, but they know I sent them all of our samples, so I think they're, they're going to do it year by year. But So you'll have to accept this. So every quarter they're going to send twelve fifty. Okay, so so we, we need to accept that right now? Do we have a check? We do have the check. Yeah. For how much? Twelve fifty. Okay. <laughs> Make a motion that we accept the check on behalf of the Remick Museum, Museum in the amount of twelve fifty. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 I guess I need help. Um, so I did speak with Sharon about who's up for the um, Jean, uh, for the Boston Post Cane, and it is Jean, yeah. which you knew. Um, I don't know anything about Jean, so does somebody have, can I contact, does somebody know somebody I can contact to find up, up about her? Kathy? The daughter? Uh, Kathy, well, I don't, I don't know them, or the family, maybe but I you think, can, or somebody on I board can. I think the, um, library um, has it too. Chris at the library. Right. Chris Klein. Oh, perfect. Chris Klein. I'll Thank talk you. to her. Okay, I'm fine. Of yep. I mean, she worked with her. Okay. And well, and she would probably have. Isn't it the genius? Let's 
So they, they'll that's have right. some good data. I'll get some stuff from her. Okay, can, so I'll get working on that. Put that together soon. Um, is the board ready to approve the town administrator job description I sent over? I changed the the hours. It just says uh, eight, and eight and a half hours, hours per day with a half hour break. Um, flexible to accommodate office hours and scheduled and unscheduled BOS meetings, I think. <clears throat> the only concern I have about that is Mondays. It says Monday through Friday. Okay. All right. <laughs> I didn't change that. <clears throat> there it is. Motion to approve the job description for the town administrator. Second. All in favor? All right. Aye. Aye. Okay. Is the board interested in starting their meeting on February 6th, the day of the budget public hearing? Do you want to start your meeting early and get all this stuff done before the public hearing? Public hearing is at 6. six. I think yes. we started at 5 last year. Yes, a payroll man this so week and it's a regular meeting. It's so a regular yeah. meeting. Yeah, so I, I'll probably, I mean, the department heads will be here, but they don't need to speak. They can come right. for the meeting. That's what I mean. Yeah. They can come for the public hearing. I wasn't yeah. going to put them on your regular yeah. agenda. Yeah, no. Okay. Just AP and Did you say five? Five. five. I just said AP and uh, payroll manifest, and that's it. <laughs> All right. Well, let's see how the week. I don't. I can't imagine anything else will be on this. So maybe we'll be five thirty. Um. Kim asked if the board was going to extend the. Uh, town vote to Wednesday night. Town vote? You know, you vote on Tuesday for the for town meeting. Yeah. And you're going to extend it to Wednesday night to do the rest. Extend the meeting. Extend the meeting. If we're having the traditional town, traditional meeting, town on meeting on Wednesday night, night versus Saturday or whatever. Well, no, no, we're doing we're Wednesday. Wednesday night. Yeah. I just wanted to confirm that before all my public notices go out. Yeah. yeah. So that was my concern. Yeah. And well, we're just doing it. Yeah. Works good. And I'm assuming good. 7 p.m. as we have yes. done yeah. in the past. So. Okay, great. Um, and then um, there's a couple pages in the town report that go over some of the information from the MS1. Um, would the board be okay with just putting the MS1 in the town report and getting rid of those other pages? What, what are the other pages? <coughs> So it would be the summary of inventory valuation, um, the war service credits, and the tax rate calculation. Oh, I think that's important to have in there. Well, it would be on the MS-1. I think it's important you to have it the way instead? you have it there Perfect. because it's really understandable to people that way. Perfect. I'll leave it the way it I is. Really, I think that's a... That's fine. Somebody had brought it up and I thought yep, I would just ask. Good, good document to have. Um, and I know, Melanie, you had asked about those sheets that were like Madison's. Yes. Really, um, we're going to try and pull something together for this year to, to get that going. If not, wasn't there? Can Linda talk? Go ahead. Oh, go ahead. She, I think Linda. I think I 91A requested it last year, so you should have it all set up. I, I didn't. It wasn't made just like, like Madison's. That. It doesn't Is have. Is it okay the way it was? Well, I think it should have. The Madison one had the um, hourly rate, rate or mm -hmm. salary. Mm -hmm. That that's the only thing that was missing that I think should have been. Then I'll take in. a look at what we have and I'll try and put it. I together. have the Madison one too. If you want to copy, I it have it after. Okay. I have, yeah, I have it. But I mean, you have Madison. it probably set up in your computer. Well, you just I do. Need to it add just in. wasn't the same, exactly the same. But but I, I think it's important to have that in the like in the book. Yeah, I have it. Yep. Yeah. All right, so we'll do that. Because I think that's important too. And Lily, I asked you earlier about that blow-up map. Right on the uh, road, Filbert uh, Road. Road. That's going to be on the warrant to be fixed. Thank you, Road Study Committee. Um, and as extra work, well, not extra work, but we need to send out notices to those two property owners. Right. Um, before that, before town meeting. So we'll do that. Have those set up. Yeah, I mean, I don't. Yeah. Even if it's a regular map, maybe I could just go to Staples and see if they could blow it up a little bit. Or I don't mean how big it has to be, as long as it's there for people to look at. See what we can get. You've got three fingers. Up. Three, three property owners. Three property owners. Three. Oh. Um, yeah, because Richard Law. Only the ones that. And 
Um, hang on, I have the paperwork from Lisa the Keith. attorney. Okay. Rachel Gloss. Rachel. I don't have it with me. And only can I third? I think it was just Lisa. Lisa. Those are not the names she gave me. I think it only had to be the discontinued piece or vice versa. It didn't have to be both sections from the paperwork she sent me. Let's send out an extra one. So we'll tell me who they are up. again. Well, Lisa Keith. Okay. I was a piece to the west of the, the northerly part of Philip Pamela Road. Rachel Glaz and her husband, and I and could, it's on the deed, I, I, I bring grandfather's name. And then Lee Cannon owned the piece that didn't get discontinued. Right. And the original. Those are not the names she gave me at all. Mm -hmm. that, that, that last one might be a trust. I, I oh, they okay, trust. I think it is. Just say. Well, okay. they're, yeah. they're in the property. Yeah. Yeah. property yeah. 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 I'll take a look and look them up. And having a map would help. I mean, I've got a map, but it's just a small eight and a half by eleven okay. map. I, mean, I suppose if we could shoot it up on the wall, we could show everybody. I don't know if there's that many people that are all that interested in the exact detail of where it is. You done? Can we do the can we do the welfare? Well, you sent well, you already did. Yeah, well, I, I sent it, but you know, cause only because Cause we approved it. Because you approved it already. Okay. I just yes. wanted to I show just, you that I did the change. Right. I just want to make sure it was there. Yeah, it was okay. approved the last meeting. We asked her to add some stuff on, but she sent it back out, so I didn't know if she was looking for another approval of that or not. No. She said no. She just sent it out, so we knew that she had changed it. Okay, because we approved it with the verbiage. Right. Oh. It's already done, Dan. Done deal. Good. All right. <clears throat> we don't need any of this old business, right? No. Public comment. Anybody been waiting at this time? This guy. Who? Oh, this guy? Yeah. Okay. Um, Why well, you point down when you say this no, guy? I was, <laughs> this guy. Anyway, um, I wanted to ask, um, I heard there's a warrant article floating around to reduce the size of the selectman board from back to three. I was just wondering how the board members felt about it, particularly the board members who served under both a three a three selectman system and a five selectman system. Mm -hmm. Which way do you think is better? <coughs> Are you looking at me? Uh, I mean, I mean, all in any selectman. Never served on a three, so. I never served on a three. So what you and I, Dan? You too. I signed the warrant. Yeah. <laughs> Did I tell you anything? You told me. <laughs> you signed the warrant. You signed the petition. I signed the petition. Oh, you signed about a petition. three? Okay. Yes. Well, I disagree with you. Yeah, because he's, he's, he's the one that initiated to make it five. <laughs> right. All right, so we got a we got a split decision. There you go. All right. Uh, any any rationales or like why you think five is better or why you think three is better? Cheaper. Cheaper. <laughs> and what was the going rate for selecting these days? <laughs> well, I know, three. Three thousand. Three big yeah. ones. Well, you guys put in a lot of hours, so I don't think they're <laughs> Is that it? That's it, thank you. Willie, you had mentioned about things falling into the landfill, like the annual report, and you brought up a cost of fifteen hundred and two grand or what have you for printers. I guess the best overall thought that I can try to convey is we're in a very wireless, paperless world. The more that you can make these documents that way, the more you can save trees and reduce your print costs on multiple fronts. And maybe you can come up with some funds without having to draw into this more slush fund that's not assigned and save taxpayers some money. Just a thought. Yeah, we do put the, the reports, warrant yeah. on the warrant and the whole document. How many, how many of them annual reports do you print? Is it 500? Yeah, 500. That's what we did last year. And when, when we you ran made out. a comment about finding the landfill, do you see them over there at the transfer station? Well, I, I have seen them. I mean, I, that's my point. In other words, I, I, I agree with, you know, if we can reduce the stuff that ends up making it to the fireplace or the, you know, the recycler. It's, it's an efficient use of the taxpayer's funds. I know that there's a core. I mean, I see this gentleman here referring to it, and I know old school, if you don't have to plug it in and wind it up or turn the lights on, it's always there for you. I mean, it's a valuable resource. Old school, but still valuable. Right. But there's a core number. It might be 200, 250. And say to folks, folks, you can view this publicly, and here's where you click or get the app.
<laughs> and you can view it on your phone. You walk away with it, you got all year to look at it. Just a thought. Thank you. You're welcome. Anything else? That price did go down a lot from last year though, right? What's that? What was the cause for the price of the books last well, year? Well, they were, they went down only because, um, they what did we pay last year? Is what I'm asking. It was about twenty six, twenty nine hundred. Twenty nine hundred. Mm -hmm. But it went down because they they're not going to coil bind them. Which is good because that's just a plastic spiral. But I thought you found it cheaper, anyways. Other than the other places were cheaper. Not than much. Than it was not much cheaper. But yeah, it was a little cheaper. Yeah. Um, excuse me. So what was your name? What was I'm your name? John Where's Peter Swerda, Baysway, Tamworth. Thank you. A dam. Oh, you got I have a question. Have you done a revenue page yet? No. We have not seen that. No. You're going to get one. Good. Okay. <coughs> so it's important. Further comment? I, I just don't think it's right that when you go out and get three prices for, or four prices for a book, and the highest one was Minuteman, but I mean, and then Darlene goes back to them and tries to bargain to get it cheaper from them. Well, if they were going to have a cheap price, they should have put it in the first well, time, because that's not is, fair for the other companies well, the that put in a cheaper price. that I only asked for coil bound from both those companies, and, and the prison came back and says they don't do that. Right. So I needed to just find out what my options were, and he's who I know. I certainly can go out and ask the one in Concord, and, and I was told last meeting that as long as I have the money I need, I don't have to go to any person. Well, I was sitting here when so, the board voted to take, not to go. The, the board voted the first time to go with the prison at a certain price, and then the next asked, meeting you come back and bargain with them. But I mean, I think when you go get these prices and you vote on something, you should stick with it, myself. Anything else? Um, I'm going to go ahead with uh, signatures for the warrant for an elected budget committee and uh, see how that turns out. Uh, I'm thinking five members. Um, finance committee, you know my views on finance committee. Um, I think it's a help, but uh, I think it's time for the town of Canberra to have an elected uh, budget committee. You're running out of time. When they have to be done? Get it. The four. Yeah. It certainly would take a load off all but one member of the board of selection. Well, um, yeah, like I told you before, I lived in Conway a few years before I moved back. Uh, and I was on an elected budget committee up there. And, uh, you know, we can't do a thing with the school. They don't even want to talk to us. You know, we sit here and nitpick uh, a little bit of money, and we're backing up the wrong tree. We should be over to that big brick building, but you can't get any information out of those people because they won't, they won't talk to you. But you've got an elected budget committee between the highway, and, you know, the police department, the school. You know, they got some clout that way. And uh, at this point, we don't have much just to offer some suggestions. So that's what my plan is. Anything further? Well, thank you all for coming. I hope you weren't too bored. We're always aimed to be entertaining. And with that being said, we're going to go into non-public. For a quick non-public, then we're going to adjourn right afterwards. So help me out here, Becky. It's going to be from 91A, C3, C2. 91A. 91A, 32A. Yes, that's what I said. 91A, 32A. And then we're going to come out of the public and we will adjourn. Can you take your roll call vote, please? Oh, Poria said yes. Mason, yes. Burnham, yes. Streeter, yes. We uh, come out in public, we will reconvene our normal meeting, and I make a motion that we seal those non-minute 
minutes. Non -public, non public minutes. Second. All in favor, roll call vote. Poria says yes. Mason, yes. Mercury, yes. Farnham, yes. Peter, <coughs> yes. Motion to adjourn. Second. Mm -hmm. All in favor? Aye. 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 I'm starving.